What you think, what you think about When you're born into a fire Let them burn, let them burn it out Sell them to the richest buyer They want to let the world decay They tell us lies and fade away, fade away We feel betrayed We were raised to lose the race Wake it to the back of the pack, kill it anyway Listen up, listen up now Truth fade away. This is bigger than ourselves. We won't let the world burn away. machine
I'd rather be a dreamer, I'd rather be free, I'd rather be a leader, I'd rather be a queen, I'd rather be a singer in a trashy cover band. I'd rather be a closer, I'd rather be clean, I'd rather be a poser in a magazine, I'd rather be pretty much anything else than your machine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another day evening. Just, uh, San, San, I'm going to introduce you, my friend. Uh, another day of fantastic PMPL scrims are coming up for the EU teams and uh, for even more entertainment, fun, and, you know, take also even a little bit of pressure on my voice. I'm joined by the wonderful Asun. How are you doing, my friend? very much for having me here and i'm uh, uh, i got too excited to be very honest with you and <laughs> it just yeah just it's, that's that's mumbling. why that's why i said to, to stay muted because i have to do the do the intro <laughs> you know um but i get it i, I get it man it. okay so i should be good hopefully the audio is balanced between myself and yourself uh in terms of the mic volume uh i can adjust it so people in chat feel free to let me know if his audio sounds mm. Too loud, too quiet, if my audio sounds too loud, too quiet. But how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, it's been uh, a little, uh, I must say, I was a bit sick uh, today. Couldn't join. Okay. For, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to hear that, man. Tournaments also. Uh, I was having a sore throat. Maybe there is a, you might experience a difference, you know, in, mm. <laughs> in well, my... Well, uh, don't... Don't strain right, yourself, yeah. man. Don't strain yourself. You know, man. Don't strain yourself. You know, chill, chill mm -hmm. a bit. You know, this, this, this is definitely more of a chill situation. Yeah, we're here to, you know, break down the the PMPL EU Western teams, which you know you'll be able mm -hmm. to get information on, and you'll be able to learn a little bit more about. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure you probably don't know too much about these teams. Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, uh. Right now, to be very honest with you, I don't know much about these teams, but eventually, after first match, I'm pretty sure that I'll be getting to know m much of the gameplay, much of the style of playing, and also the name of the teams. Yeah, I'm sending you the, the list of the teams for the first game. I'll send you game by game because there's five groups of four teams. Similar standard stuff as PMPL format. You're used to that right from casting PMPL South Asia. So, you know, I'll send you game by game the list of teams. That goes from slot number one, by the way. 
So slot number one is Conquer, slot two is Optimus Go, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it gives you a bit of an idea in that sense. But, uh, yeah, um... Yeah, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, how uh, so? So tell me, you know how how was your how was your experience casting the PMPL South Asia and, and you know is there anything that specifically stood out for you and yeah how how was it for you? It was it was great actually. It was my first time doing a big tournament uh, and and I was uh, being okay. Uh, with the, some of the best uh, Urdu casters, some of the, my local language casters in Pakistan. So it was uh, overall a learning experience, but in terms at this time in PMPL South Asia, we um, noticed that due to the entry of Zeus uh, Esports into the whole scene, it really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm not getting the word. Mm. It actually raised up the raise up the bar for other teams also to actually perform better because as we've seen during the league plays some of the teams were struggling against Zeus uh, and uh, due to that you know constant uh, urge of improving themselves they eventually yep. got that good in finals and Zeus uh, actually somewhat somewhat they managed to finish on second I was expecting them to be in first but DRS gaming just with two points got the championship and I'm very happy for these guys because they they last time they were about, I believe, second, and this time yeah. uh, they they got the championship. So, a big, big congratulations to these guys. Uh, the, uh, description. By the way, everybody, you guys enjoying, right? This is Imperium Cast Channel. Make sure you subscribe, you guys. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wait, no, no, there's a, lot to come. Uh, there's a lot to come. This of teams and description. I just need to put that and then pin that comment so people, hopefully, hopefully people will see it so they don't ask um, a needless question or a question that isn't needed. But uh, yeah, so, you know, when, when you're talking about European PUBG Mobile, okay. Um, mm -hmm. To me, European PUBG Mobile is generally quite aggressive compared to a lot of regions. There's definitely similarities, right? The standard across the globe is improving day after day, month after month. But if you're trying to kind of, you know, pinpoint a, a couple of differences, to me, I think uh, European PUBG Mobile is somewhat uh, a little bit more aggressive. I'm not saying it's more confident. I'm not saying it's better. I just think it's a tiny bit more aggressive they're not they do seem to be just go a little bit more balls to the wall a little bit more um straight mm -hmm. into an engagement there's still things mm -hmm. to be improved on when it comes to rotations and strategies and and as these teams play against each other more you're gonna see a bit more familiarity but to me the european scene is is very healthy when it comes to taking fights yeah, actually, uh, with the time, with the evolution, with, with playing against those big teams, eventually they will learn how to, uh, you know, place themselves during a match, how to rotate, how to get a position, you know, stuff like that. But if you are pretty good and confident about your gun skills, you will eventually take down a bigger team when it comes to 1v1 or 4v4 sure. sure. squad fight. So I believe, uh, as you mentioned, they're a little bit aggressive. I, I'm... Uh, I have a big respect for these guys because this kind of meta I've been actually experiencing here in locally in Pakistan. So in Pakistan, it's kind of the same thing. These guys are aggressive. One knock, they're pushing in. Team yeah. gone or you're surviving or you're done. That's the scene. So this way, you actually develop the gun skills that you need for the bigger stages. Sometimes we see teams are pretty uh, compelled to toward the strategy toward the rotation but when when it comes yeah. to squad to squad fight an early fight that is being pushed on you they'll be gone they'll be eliminated and uh, exactly you're getting no point at the early stage of the game doesn't matter how good your rotation was and have you have you heard of any of the european teams before have you ever seen Lack them in Nostra. terms of that and Nostra? Uh, yeah <laughs> Black and Austria, they, they have a massive 
following the Lacan Austria is it the org is, is based in Albania, um Albania mm-hmm. slash Kosovo and and there's a massive Albanian Kosovo uh level of support uh, across Europe uh over the last year, year and a half. It's really grown massively and there's a lot of pride. Um you know, it kind of reminds me of South Asian pride to be fair. There's a there's a lot of uh there's a lot of support there from from the community. So Lacanostra uh, MVP. It used to be just Lacanostra Power. And there was yep. a team called MVP Gaming. And coming mm-hmm. into the PMCO, uh, and the, then obviously the PMPL, they joined forces. So you have kind of you have the the best of the Lacanostra team with the best of the uh MVP team. And both teams were were by no means bad, but together they're looking to to create something e- even bigger and to get further within the competitive PUBG Mobile scene. So that's a little bit of a of a background behind Lacanostra. Yeah, and also uh, Team Umbra. I've seen them in action uh, previously. When as a viewer, I used to watch you uh, casting alongside uh, a friend of ours from Middle East. There was a European League, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about the name to be exact, but I have seen the Umbra National Cup, I think. I yeah, think the, the National Cup. Yeah. yeah, National Cup. Yeah, so I have seen I've seen Team Umbra also play. So I'm really looking forward to how they'll play this first particular match, and uh, it will be a good learning experience for me as well because for sure. this way, uh, this way, uh, most of the time people actually tend to learn more about an A scene. But uh, as you mentioned that most aggressive squads actually coming out of Europe. And if we talk about sure. scores like Canina Powers, uh, uh, you know, scores like, uh, as you mentioned, like Nostra, these teams actually, uh, they surprise you when they come in front of you. For sure. You were For expecting sure. something, uh, you know, that you weren't expecting. And now you see a team actually coming in bla- with blazing fires and, you know, and taking you down so easily. Now you need to learn about them. Now you need to see what they're doing. So this is a good opportunity for most of the people out there to learn more about these teams. Uh, no sound coming from desktop audio. Uh, 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 that is so weird. Let me have a look. Why is there no audio from the... Let me just check something. I hope... No, that's that's definitely not me. That's from the... Clean feed. Do you have the link of the of the clean feed, right? Yep, I'm actually watching it. at first match is like. Is there is there no yeah. sound from it? Uh, let me check. Yep, there is no sound on the clean feed right now. Okay, okay, okay. I thought it was just me for a sec. I was like, uh, wait, 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 because <laughs> I thought maybe it was something to do with my my audio mixer with including you and all that jazz. But either way. This game one has gone on, and we will get into it. Obviously, I also want to make sure that we're on the same um, time, so we'll do a little bit of a time check during this game. But that phase one is pretty healthy to kick things off. As you see, Rescue and Black Sparks are fighting in the crates of George Paul. Now, Rescue have landed in the crates of George. Uh, oh, we have sound. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I hope that's not too loud. But uh, Rescue have landed in the Crater George for quite a while. Black Sparks have yet to really find their home in the preparation for the PMPL Europe. So they've been kind of, um, I wouldn't say dropping on a couple of teams, but, but they've been testing out a couple of different areas and, and they are actively trying to push Rescue away from the Crater George Ball. Yep, definitely on the other side, if we talk about Team BS, uh, Luffy actually uh, taking a lot of damage from the side, and uh, he's still surviving, but there you go, Luffy taking now on the opposition team, and uh, Rescue Hyper will be on his knees, uh, and it start in initial, if there is a fight breaking up, definitely teams need to, first of all, uh, regroup properly, so they don't uh, take much of the losses, and there you go, Rescue, uh, um, check out. What, what's your time at? On, on this stream. Okay, let me check. On my side. 
I believe I'm 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 a bit uh, behind you. So what what's bit. it counting from like you know on the timer of the game? My side, let me see. Should be able to see it on the. It gives me live. On on the time, yeah, it is. Uh, let me tell you. So three minutes and ten seconds. Okay, 11, so count it forward. 12. Count. Can't just keep it going. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it so we're on the same time. Let me know when you get to 25, 26, 27, 28, okay? There you go. I'm at 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay. 30. Perfect. Perfect. I pause yeah. it. Now we're back. Sorry guys, that can sometimes be the case when we're dealing with uh with uh, a clean feed <laughs> through different through different links, but uh yeah, so rescue Black Sparks. Black Sparks are definitely getting the better rescue. Once again, another knockdown on the Coyote. Does put rescue into a little bit of a corner of the crates. It's going to be hard for them to get out of. Definitely on the other side, uh, the team actually uh, compensating the losses right now. Rescue once again taking a knock, and this time this knock will be flushed on the other side. If we talk about BS, they are actually aggressing. Smokes are being deployed, and another kill will be flushed in team. Uh, rescue, and there you go. Rescue one more player got spotted, and he's peeking down, and uh, Thompson being peppered down his way. Small place, won't be much of the cover, and there you go. Team BS actually aggressing and taking down Team Rescue. It was uh, pretty easy for them. Yeah. <laughs> Belen didn't even have a gun, so he's trying to punch the last player, Res Q. And hey, he was a meat shield. He didn't get confirmed. And that's going to be Res Q wiped out of the South Crates area by Black Sparks. And I've, I've been talking to Banger from Black Sparks he, over the past kind of week or so. Oh. And, and I'd been talking to him about different strategies and different drop spots and he had told me that they were contesting um rescue and that they were confident that they were going to be able to beat them and indeed it was the case uh very well played yeah on the other side team rice gang actually i don't know if they're looking for rice in milta but uh still <laughs> they're on the roads and uh on the, and uh milta actually it's, it's been getting really interesting teams actually favoring mental a bit because in recent times we have seen teams actually top in milta are being favored by the first circles and there you go team uol taking one loss from the side of gs wait what what's your, what's okay you're like ahead of me now okay that's weird uh <laughs> i don't know how you're ahead of me but just wait two seconds internet connection <laughs> That's weird. What's your what's your time at? Uh it's uh five fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Okay, okay, it's better six. now. That's weird. I don't know what's up there. We'll have to keep an eye on it anyway. We'll keep an eye on it um and see how it goes uh throughout these games. But yeah, um with the circle the way it is, it was always going to uh really kind of allow teams that, that got the high ground, even if it's out in the open, the controlling area early on to catch teams off and i gotta say credit to gsg europe they landed down on towards the southwestern side they rotated and they were able to get a kill on one of the unicorns of love players a gap on the side of unicorns of love uh getting one player down so early it seems six minutes it will really uh more help you in the coming fights i must say and on the other side team gste they are pretty close and another fight can break in and it can uh get more losses on the side of team uol unicorns of love they need to actually retreat from their position and try to get a hold of uh, a compound where they can actually stay can hold for it for a longer time mm. and then can progress for the coming stages now what i would like to see nexus do is actually keep one player on the hill down south because that open hill uh to the south of their compound really gives them a little bit more information Coming into teams maybe rotating around the ferry pier area, maybe just rotating from the east and going a bit further. As much as I really love the fact that they're in that compound and they're holding it down, just being able to uh, get information early on, I think will make a bit more of a better difference as Unicorns a lot of Savage X oh, catches off. 
Kamara, that's an initial knockdown. Fresh finds Andalito. Oh, Unicorn Lolo are swinging it. Absolutely, and on the side, back for Mercy, taking one player more down on this team. 11 in, I believe, last player actually came for rescue. Let's see if this rescue will be successful, but on the side of Savage, he's actually preparing a nade, and this nade can be quite devastating and will be eliminating team for sure. And uh, if you go, smokes are being deployed. These smokes will be a uh, virtual cover for a while, but uh, team unicorns of love are actually going to be disengaged. Looking for the last player, GSG Europe in the smokes, twisting their way around, beg for mercy, not really spotting them out for now, Lau's gonna stay inside the wings of the smokes while the SKS being fired up by beg for mercy and fresh finds Lau, job done, GSG Europe, they may have gotten the first casualty on the unicorns of love, but unless you shut down the unicorns, there's a strong chance that they are going to take you out. Coming into phase two, there's a lot of space available on the northern side of this circle, and it's a northern shift. Oh, what's this uh, player doing from team two? Well, Optimus Esports. I think looking at actually the player was sitting right on his face and he was able to spot him and one player taken down on the side of optus uh, optimus uh, uh esports but on the other side this shift of phase actually it will be uh, not a big problem for teams to rotate because there's a lot of space available and open areas of gatka will be really really in play a bit tricky area i must say when it comes to wrangle but uh nowadays uh, most of the te these teams yeah. like to play around Gatka because this way they can actually, if they are the early ones to get into Gatka, they will be getting a, uh, a vital compound or maybe a trench, and that's all. They will be getting tons and tons of kills. People will be coming in and providing them those kills. Gotta say, fair play to Lacanostra MVP for rotating on to Pachinki Hill without any real trouble. Yeah. They landed on the eastern side of the map and they made that rotation and they've pushed Optimus Esports back, taking down Salazar along the way. Now, as we do come into the blue zone, starting to close in on phase two, Lacanostra MVP do still have to be aware that there could still be a couple of teams to the south of their location. So being aware of what's going on behind them is going to be even more important. PRZ, one of the teams that's behind Lacanostra MVP, catches out. What the F, we, Vito finds another, so it's double trouble oh. as Qatar forces under a lot of pressure. Absolutely, Qatar forces one player being... Uh, flushed already. One player is knocked down, bleeding out, and definitely uh, there we go. Team Conquerors, they will be confirming that kill, but they are actually chasing Qatar forces, and though those remaining two players, they will also be uh, taken down on the side of uh, Qatar forces. Reeves actually aggressing further, getting closer to that compound, and it's one of the risky, riskier compounds, I must say, where you uh, have to approach mm. the compound from an open area with the way little of the cover. Look at the position of uh, from the player nice. of uh, uh, Tough Fortress. Yeah, he can actually take down Reeves easily once he will be trying to aggress toward that compound. But uh, he's actually giving that vital cover. Two players rushing in. Perfect. Conquerors actually want to conquer that uh, compound. And for sure, these players, uh, 1v2 situation. Reeves actually joining this engagement also. And there you go. Player taken down. Qatar forces actually losing one more player and i believe uh team conqueror having three kills in their backpack from the side of Qatar yeah. forces uh did you know on a fun fact uh Rees is irish he's uh he lives in dublin uh yeah he's, oh, he's uh so it's kind of you know a little bit of national pride there and reason marty did play in the pmgc so they are uh, very experienced players and they are a powerhouse in my eyes when it comes to this upcoming PMPL. And I think they played that engagement extremely well, keeping Reese in that back line. Reese does play the supporting role for side. He's more of that kind of mid to long range player while Marty, uh, along with kind of Azzy, is the kind of forward, forward uh, fragger and then Vito 
kind of flanks on the side or as he sometimes. But the next phase does pop up and the centers quite nicely. Scrimp oh, armor, nice. but he's got a knock initially, and now they're gonna take the fight to destiny. Last move. Absolutely, and there you go. Last player also being uh, shot quite too much. A lot of damage being dealt on the player, and he's gone down. And there you go. Finished job well done from the side of uh, Team SF. Uh, one player only uh, got hmm. some damage being uh, taken down, but uh, can, rest doing a good job. Can I job, ask? Doing a good job. What yep. browser do you use? Are you uh, or are you? Are you watching on your phone? On your phone, what or what browser do you use for watching the I'm clean feed? I'm using Google Chrome. I'm it's using weird Google because Chrome. you're actually like ahead of me now. Once again, <laughs> you're ahead of me like once again. It's so weird. So it's just in the try and leave the play by play fights to me if you could because you're behind and we'll try and sort something else for the for the next game. But what's, what's for the time, time being, uh, Nexus. Able to uh, take out a couple of players and we're for time on my side is 13, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. We're, we're, there you go. We are synced. We are okay. synced now. It's just, it's weird. Like you seem to be kind of a little bit faster than me. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. But uh, yeah, Destiny wiped out a good push from... Scrim farm down the down the Everest train while Lackanoster MVP and Con Conqueror will clash on the hills of Pachinki right on the southeastern edge of this circle. Uh, yep, and Danny actually preparing a good gift for Team Conqueror coming in, and Vito and uh, AZY actually aggressing, but they are unaware of the position they of LSE, I must say. LSE. Yeah, LSC can actually. Elicio, it's Elicio. Elicio. Elicio, actually. I'm, I'm sorry to pronounce that. Uh, no offense uh, so far. <laughs> so, uh, Lucky Nostra MVP taking one player down. But uh, on the other side, Dark actually trading one more knock on the side of Team uh, Conqueror. Conqueror actually about to get a second knock, but uh, Danny being flushed so quick. Uh, that was that was actually brutal, I must say. But uh, if you talk about this uh, team, uh, Conqueror actually taking once again more damage. Ravens actually taking that damage, but uh, this time Dark actually decided to go further and uh, try to warn them with some of the warning shots. Nothing is connecting right now on Team uh, uh, Conqueror. Conqueror's one game uh, once again. Four men up on the other side. Uh, Kill feed actually telling us some story about SF. Uh, going on unicorns of love but mm. the London Australian they are being pushed nice. down the hill in this situation there you go Reeves nade connecting with the will will is being low and on the side Elicio is actually low on HP but uh, this uh, situation dark can be the guy but the uh, team conquer conquering the whole situation team Lockenostra MVP being taken down. Another team to bite the dust from the side of Conquerors. Fantastic engagement overall. I was worried that they were going to be able to give too much freedom for Dark to have an impact in that fight, but uh, they played on the side of the hill where Dark had no real impact. They took them down one by one. Job done. Conqueror get another squad wipe right on board scrim farm and black sparks fighting on the western edge of the circle luffy's getting knocked down hamo gets knocked down banger is down on the banger hills of everest while awm detati holds it down takes the shots on the banger banger is going to be left with about one hp but he's going to get away with it for now savage x is gonna go down, and I don't quite know if that's Unicorns of Love wiped out, or if they still have one player standing. Yeah, well, on the other side, Unicorn of Love, one player is still standing, and there you go, he's being taken down from the side of SF. SF actually doing this job. Nine kills, a big number of kills, actually, this early in this game, really boost up your confidence, but on the other side, if you talk about Ranger, he was just shy of one bullet to actually mm. get eliminated. And uh, that bullet didn't connect it, so lucky guy, but he is actually quite close to the Mount Everest. And uh, Team 8 is actually, they join in too. So it will be a 2v1 situation for x Banger. Me, Ishii, why didn't you stop the heal up? He 
Maybe she wouldn't just stop the heal up. What the hell is that? I don't know what's going on, but Optimus Esports. Ah, they are looking for a team across the road. While Vito gets knocked, Rice Gang are in a fight against Conqueror. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Rice Gang in a fight against Conquer. Looking pretty good overall for Conquer scenes and Nexus. And as you saw, Optimus Esports just tickling each other a little bit. While Caster uh, takes a couple yeah. of shots in the direction of Vito, who's knocked for the side of Conquer. Actually, it's a very long range engagement, I must say, being taken from the side of Optimus. Uh, uh, team Optimus, I must say, Optimus Esports, but this way you're actually uh, taking all these things in your favor. If mm. these guys decide to actually aggress on you, they have their helmet damaged, they have their uh, oh. military rest, whatever rest, police vest they're wearing is damaged. So you have that favor, but on the other side, the Rice Gang actually uh, trying to pepper down some bullets on Team Conquerors. Team Conquerors, let's see if they can conquer this engagement. But AZ, why again getting a lot of damage? Naxus uh, pulling those first of DP. DP is being actually pre uh, used in different metas across. I've, I've been seeing it in European meta now and in South Asian meta. Teams are really liking DP. Like, even uh, this new update actually, you know, made it more uh, jiggly or shaky, I must say. Yeah, but fun fact, for the most part, DP28 was first introduced in the competitive meta in around the end of 2019, and it kind of developed from there. It did fall off a tiny bit within 2020, but it found its form once again uh, throughout or developing throughout 2020, and I do think it's quite strong right now for those long-range Gunners, the players like Reeves, who, you know, you have 47 bullets in that clip. It's stable when you're prone down. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not good close quarter combat, but you have the right guns for that. And as sure as hell could beat a DMR in terms of fire rate. We are down to 18, 20 on players. Rice Gang for going for a little bit of a desperate push in the center of the circle. It might work out for them as cakes. Is going to stay alive. Reznov shoots out the vehicle, blows it up without getting a player knocked. Yep, on the other side, kill feed actually uh, showing some engagement from the side of Umbra taken down, but uh, Rice Cakes actually retaliates. Uh, team Conqueror getting one knock from the side of. Uh, of uh, Team Rice, but on the other side, Team Umbra trying to get into the circle. PRZ, it will be eliminated from the side of uh, Team uh, uh, Romanians, four Romanian men, and uh, eventually Talon will be taken down. Four players actually uh, shooting in your direction. You won't be surviving much, and there you go. Eliminated. Easy elimination on the side of four Romanian it, it, On a side note, it's actually, they're actually called Nexus. My apologies, they're actually called Nexus. Um, for our, um, uh, they used to be called four Romanian men. The irony of the fact that they do have a female player in their side called Sushi, and it got picked up by an orc called Nexus, so they're <laughs> actually called Nexus as it happens. And there's also a player called Nexus that plays for Rise Gang. There's also two players called Mishi in the PMPL. It's confusing, but you know what? It's part of why we love PM. PL and PUBG Mobile Esports. Five teams have 14 players. Rice Gang have three up, but the only one kill on board. Banger gets a knock on the Nexus and will get confirmed up by Icy with the AWM. Nicely done. Yep, well, nicely done, but on the side of uh, Rice uh, uh, again uh, taking a knock. Nexus has been knocked. Oh and, uh, my god! Oh my god, Halzino got a crossbow kill on the banger. Halzino crossbow killed banger with a 4x on it. Oh my god, Halzino. Okay, the disrespect. Come on, I, I, I'm not happy that you're using this in scrims because honestly, it's it's frustrating. However, when it, in terms of entertainment, yeah, okay, that's that's pretty OP. 
definitely and uh if you are able to pull up this kind of kills and uh eventually you will skyrocket your confidence but on the other side team op they need to move into the circle circle is being held by nexus right now one player is still out of the uh circle yeah. but uh, they need to make it in the circle <laughs> to show the replay of the crossbow kill on point as Optimus Esports crash in on the Nexus's train and look to rain on their parade indeed that's gonna be the end of them that's all she wrote is Optimus Esports with the crossbow driven Halzino find their way into the circle as we're down to our final three teams Scrim Farm, Nexus, sorry Scrim Farm, Optimus Esports and Rice Gang Scrim Farm has 13 kills in this game. Rice Gang, as far as I know, only on one. And Optus Esports, I believe, are on five or six. When you're looking at the circle, realistically favors any of these three teams. Maybe more so Optimus Esports. It all depends on how many smokes and how much utility you have on board. And of course, how that phase seven will shift up. Yep, definitely this uh, next phase actually will be deciding the fate of some of the teams and uh, uh, somehow teams are actually clustered on the edges and this way uh, I believe it will be really easy for them to move in and uh, the yeah, problem will for create sure. for the teams that will be actually moving from outside. AWN Detati gets knocked down. It's a good start for Rice Gang, making use of the high ground extra elevation point. However, because there's three teams left, there is a little bit of a three way dance coming on board as a Molotov burns through Carno, leaving Nightmare on his own for the time being. Looking for Xerox. I think Xerox is a. Uh, an additional player for Scrim Farm coming into the PMPL, so there's that element of synergy that needs to be developed. I must try and find out about that. As Rice and Gang are out, we're down to our final two teams. Optimus Esports going up against Scrim Farm 3. V3 clean as she goes. But when you're looking at the circle, it is in the favor of Optimus Esports. That's why Caster drove himself forward into the circle in a more controlling position. Icedo finds Muzi. Xerox finds Caster. One player left in his own. Halzino, as far as I know, the last time I checked, he only had an Uzi. He only had a crossbow. It's not bad, but we know what Scrim Farm do. If they look for the fight, if they find the fight, they're going to take the fight. And in the final seconds of this game, they win the fight. And they win game one in a wrangle. Yeah. Um... So, Asan, unfortunately, uh, had to go because his, essentially, his bandwidth is, uh, not good, <laughs> essentially. So, his, his bandwidth is not good, unfortunately. So, I uh, he's, he's just had to go. The, the feed is essentially not working. It's lagging. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be back on my own. Uh, sorry about that, but thank you to you, Hassan, for, uh, passing with me, even if it was just for one game. It's an absolute pleasure, my friend. It means a lot. I will, of course, uh, change the title of the stream because I don't want to, uh, mislead people, to be fair. Bingo. But, uh, great game and, and great, great win, great finish by Scrim Farm. Uh, hey, look, you know, they, uh, they, in the Unicorns of Love, uh, ex Vernic PMPL League, uh, they were struggling to win games when it came to the Super Weekends, but they've shown that they can win games right, right here, right now. So I'd like to see them repeat that in the Unicorns of Love, ex Vernic League, uh, because I think it would be, uh, obviously more beneficial more impactful we will of course show you both highlights and the scores at the end of this first game um yeah it's gonna be pretty cool
Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Let's have a look at these highlights. This is the first fight between Black Sparks and Res Q. And uh, Black Sparks taking out Res Q in the end. Blend had no gun, but he was still somewhat useful for his side. Lau caught out. Ked, that's what happened. Ked scouted forward. That's what kind of Ked does. It's what Ked does. He does kind of scout forward for his side, and he got caught out in that moment. Lackanostra MVP. Getting an initial kill, but in the end, they got taken out by Conqueror in a, what was an overall fantastic engagement from Conqueror. Because like I said, Dark was probably the, the biggest danger for Conqueror, but because there was no real aggressive backup, what Conqueror were able to do is that they were able to play on this side of the hill that Dark had no real impact on. And that's how they were able to come out on top. It's actually doing a fantastic job for his side as well. That was a, a top-notch kill onto Banger by Halzido. I'm definitely going to be sending that one to Banger. Oh, is it shown live? What the hell? That's weird. Ah. Okay, I don't know why it had live. My apologies. That was a that was a mistake on my end. But either way, this is the the leaderboard for this game. Um, Scrim Farm with seventeen kills, thirty two points in total. Optimus Esports with five kills, seventeen points in total. Black Sparks with seven kills, putting them on thirteen total points. Rice Gang with eleven. Nexus eleven. Conquer with. Seven, one place in point, and those six kills perking Conquer up into the top eight. Um, and you see the match stats as I see Detati and Xerox all in the top three of kills, six, six, and five, respectfully. Xerox, don't know much about, about him. I must try and find out, to be fair. Um, as it's quite obvious, he, uh, showed something promising in that game. Because it's only game one, there, there no, you know, there's no overall stand. Actually, no, there is overall standings to show, because overall, overall, across the days that we've had so far, the match stats is, uh, 1,200 damage for AWM to Tati. 12 under damage for one player alone that's more than most teams do in a single game for mine from a single player and then icy with 954 damage uh, you know outside of outside of the actual kind of kill base damage there's also a lot of ticking onto uh the players of rice gang which added to uh, oh um obviously some teams will have played more games, but Scrim Farm still uh, with, with, I think it's still nine games. I don't know why it shows 10, but as far as I know, it's nine games, 107 points. Nexus with uh, 86, Conquer 85, and Destiny still holding on to the top spot with 123 points. Unicorns 11, 6, Umbra in 7th, and Black Sparks in 8th. Hey, Mobile fans. Wanna learn so on the note, let's uh, favorite professional take players. it to a break. Now you I'll can. see you guys Not in a bit. Only watch how best PUBG Mobile teams compete on the battlegrounds, but also how they practice and train. From March to May, teams from Western Europe will play 35 screen matches open for viewers. You'll get a chance to witness how 20 best Western European teams like Unicorns of Love, Lost Bullet, Team Umbra and many more train and improve their playing skills. Stream matches will take place on 30th of March, 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th of April, 4th and 11th of May. Get closer to your idols and learn their playstyle.
what if I'm incomplete without you by my side? What if I go against my heart instead of confessing from the start? What if I miss out on the life meant for us? I need you by my side. I need you by my side. I need you by my And we are going straight into game number two here in the PMPL scrims. Oh, we have like lists of teams on the on the right hand side. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's going to be groups A, B, C, no, A, B, D and E for this game too. So Conquer Optimus Esports. We basically include Eastern Stars, One Shot UDR, Cash, and Game Lord for this second game. It is in a wrangle, so it's going to be two wrangle, one Miramar, and two Sandhawk for today's games. That playing path is uh, pretty standard. Uh, a little bit up north allows Destiny to get to Severny. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Game Lord will most likely go to North George. Uh, because there is no scrim farm, Game Lord will have basically free reign. There is also no... Um... Wait, or are they trying somewhere else? No, no, I think Black Sparks are dropping down in, in George Paul crates. That phase one is pretty aggressively down on the southeastern side of the map. There's no, um, there's also Conqueror, but Conqueror going for a split drop on the north of the river. It's a, a secondary drop spot for them when it comes to, uh, when it comes to a wrangle. Fight between Black Sparks and Rescue is kicked off with both teams trading a kill each. Blood trying to do something from the background. His tick is inside the warehouse. Coyote is also inside another warehouse. I think Coyote is going to be able to be supported a little bit by uh, by Blood. 
Cody. Oh, cooking up a grenade. That could be a very well placed grenade over the window. Doesn't quite do the damage needed, but it's a very strong attempt by Coyote. Really uh, respect that, to be fair. Don't know uh, what that grenade was, Coyote. You have no helmet, but you do have a level 2 vest. A banger on the underside of the wall is uh, going to prone down, maybe cook up his own grenade. Of course, tracking the audio uh, of the footsteps is massively important in Pudgy Mobile, so that's one of the big things. And that's where Banger has tracked it perfectly, getting a knockdown on the Coyote with that grenade. Because Coyote, for the most part, was staying on kind of that one area. There's no real shift in his movement, and that's where I think Banger is a little more, more confident. It does give Black Sparks now the advantage coming into uh, this fight as their player up Blood and Belend going toe-to-toe -to -toe in their own little mini fight. But again, Belend does have a bit more support with Banger on the... One side and Fluffy close by. But if Belen goes too far forward, I don't know if Fluffy is going to be able to support him. There's a blood. Ticks in a situation where you can probably support blood if blood backtracks. Of course, blood doesn't want to move because the less he moves, the less information he's given over to the side of Black Sparks. I don't think Black Sparks are even aware that blood is still there. We're not moving, having the discipline. Stay safe for an, a period of time. Really throws your opponents off track. I do like the fact that Black Sparks have joined up together and are moving through the crates together, checking the corners together. Because they know that if they allow themselves to be picked off one by one, that could be the undoing of them. Did notice that one shot UDR did get a kill or a knock initially onto a player of Nexus. How are you doing, Milas? I hope you're well, my friend. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to this stream so far. Thank you so much to Asum for uh, joining me for a bit of casting in the first game. It was a pleasure to have him on board. Hope you are all having a wonderful day. Game Lord looting up North George as I come. Victor already getting a buggy so he can kind of loot the back of George, pick up the new and to make their way out into the circle because they are quite far away from the circle, right? Because of that southeastern phase one. It's going to be a tr bit tricky. Big ball, big brain play could be. Go down to Primorsk, grab a boat, go onto the western side of Military Island, move into the circle that way. Uh, I'm, hey, 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 hey. I'm not saying it would be the perfect move, but it would be a move that you could pull off. Move that has been pulled off is Res Q being put down to just one blood left on his own because Black Sparks moved together on that engagement under Coyote. Got the knockdown. Got the confirmed kill. Now Blood is going to have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Belend isn't even opting to try and heal up. He's just making sure that he can power his way through while Black Sparks for the second game in a row knock Res Q off the crates of George Paul. And I've got to wonder, what is that doing to the mentality of Res Q coming in to the PNPL? Is that making them think we should change drop spot? Is that making them think we can't win these fights? What is going through their heads, right? Something to think about. Conqueror looting up uh, untouched Yasnaya on the northern edge of the circle. Very solid uh, rotation from them. It, technically, they didn't need to, I think, join up together too early. But the fact that it made sense for them to go there, maybe they attract that no team had gone to Yasnaya. Good job. Very good job. 
one shot udr maybe looking to chase nexus out of this game too completely however dexter gonna stay behind a wall looking for the shots onto the members of one shot udr three in a car looking to move out down by the side of the wall gets one gets two one two uni flew pick up a shoe nexus getting the better of one shot udr dexter you don't mess with them and sushi then on the other side as well she picked up a knock and a kill oh baby brilliant brilliant so good for dexter you're in chat my friend i see you dexter seriously seriously man was there was there any need for for that that was op like slow down my friend give others a chance to shine Lacanostra MVP are in this game. Kaz, all the team and game information is in the description, my friend. In the description. See, Lacanostra MVP on your screen right now as Will gets knocked down by Trazen, the French maestro. Part of the all French clash team. Azer, Hikoni, Trazen, MZ, along with Spicy and Luna is the six-person roster for the PMPL. Adding Spicy and Luna for the PMPL to bol bolster their squad because I know some of the players can't play all of the days and they just want to make sure that they have the, the variability, the rotational ability. So they are overall working on... on a, a, Essentially making sure that whoever plays, whatever the roster is, that there is the same standard across the board. And indeed, that's going to be the case as they take down Danny of Lacanostra MVP. Lacanostra MVP picked apart one by one. The log in Cabin Hills phase two popped up in the center quite nicely. And that's good. That's really good because even though you still have a little bit of the military island in play, it's most likely going to be a mainland finish. Only frustrating thing is that because of the water and that military island, really talking about a phase three mainland circle in a phase two, right? There's just not as much landmass available. Uh, we, of course, are down to 42 players, 13 teams. Take that into account. But I always try and talk about the circles like that in terms of the shifts, as if there is, you know, 50, 55 players left alive. Of course, if you are liking the stream, feel free to drop a like. Feel free to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I do uh, host and cast and stream various scrims and tournaments uh, whenever I can. Including these professionally observed official PMPL EU scrims. Gaijin Seraphin across from the farm. Actually, no, not the farm. It's a Milta, Milta area, actually. With GSG Europe on the hills uh, outside of the Miltec coastline. Great spot for a... Uh, great spot for GSG Europe to be in. Because they do still have the safety of the compound if they need to. And they have the elevation of their... Rocks with the high ground on the coastal line. And they'll be able to spot out when the team is getting close by. All quiet on the western front as we uh, see the blue zone of phase two is pushing in on the 12 minute mark of the game. Unicorns of Love did go for rotation across into the military island which made complete sense because there's a much higher chance there is going to be much more traffic on the western edge of the circle 
compared to the military island. Because of that shift up north, it means that there's there's way more freedom of them moving in. Into the mainland from the military island. And indeed, they made that push relatively early into phase. Not opting to wait for phase three. Do you see? Conquer a veto. Really, uh, kind of fight on his own in a 1v2, but Beast is going to get caught out as Rees is knocked down, switching over to the DP28, and Azzy is going to finish the job there before getting the revive on the Reeves. Standard stuff for Conqueror, a poor game two for Destiny, off the back of what was a poor game one. I know these are just screens, but I'm still going to ask the question, hmm, what's happening to you, Destiny? Because you're on top of the standings. Of course I like Elysio. Elysio is OP. One of the most dangerous, uh, fantastic players across the board. Phase 3 has popped up and it's gone down south once again. Now there's not as much water in play as Phase 2, but there's still more water in Phase 3 than we kind of thought. And we see a lot of teams opting for the Milta region in terms of rotation. Optimus Esports, Lacanostra, MVP, Unicorns of Love and Nexus. All around there now. It does seem for the most part that all of these teams are playing on the edges and the edge buildings of Milta Hell. Like, Unicorns Love aren't they even in the buildings. They're on the beach side. Getting put under a little bit of pressure by Nexus. You're still all of the northern half of the Phase 3 circle is relatively unoccupied, right? Relatively unoccupied. Unoccupied. And uh, thank you, Kaz. Really appreciate it. Right, uh, keep keep supporting Lacanostra MVP. It definitely will help them, for sure. And much love to you. Thank you, man. Lacanostra MVP lost two at the hands of Clash earlier on, but they do still have two players up, Dark and Alicia. Gaijin Seraphin staying in their compound across from GSG Europe. He has Lao on the high ground hills. Being that, you know, that that visionary for his side. See if he can um, vision himself a couple of victims, a couple of players that he can take out and create more of a controlling space for GSG Europe. Coming into the phase four shift. Hello, Phantom. Hope you're doing well, my friend. I really love Optimus Esports' position on the uh, northwestern edge of Milta because that spread is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And they have sidelines on the upper hills of the, of the logging cabins, right? And it's a major shift on the south east that is a crazy shift i haven't seen this kind of circle in quite a while my friends hell i hadn't really seen an eastern circle in quite a while and this is a hell of a way to give us it right clash instantly shifting down the hills of the logging cabins into the arms of where nexus unicorns of love are subsiding have they been able to find a space they have maybe found a space but they found unicorns of love and they'll take that just as much as anywhere else you see europe are around them as our nexus conquer also going for a bit of a, a deep Rotation now into the north eastern edge of this phase for Optimus Esports. Kind of a little bit quicker, but they're getting put under pressure by GSG Europe. A lot of teams opting to go for that push without any real significant amount of information. It's hurt Optimus Esports. Hurt them badly. Eastern Stars, Acapalca. Bini Ba is taken out, unfortunately, by Nexus, the Romanian counterparts. Both Romanian teams representing their country in the PMPL EU West. 
The reason why Kapahala lost that fight is because he didn't have a UMP. Simple as that. But Fury is going to try and clean things up by getting a knockdown onto Dexter. Aim bottom. Nexus pushing forward. Finding Athis. And is going to get knocked down after taking a couple of shots that were missed. A little bit of an F in the chat for Aimbot in that little engagement. Game Lore coming in behind while Sushi and Dexter are doing their best to keep this game alive for Nexus. Robs is aware. Chucks out a grenade. It's a beautiful grenade. Connects onto Dexter who was just revived up. Sorry, confirms Dexter. Sushi's left on her own. And that's where it could be Game Lords fight for the win as they two across the road to either side. Eastern Stars may be holding Game Lord back a bit. Plus Unicorns are love off the back of losing a player at the hands of Clash. Are going to be looking to third party this one. At this, nearly getting caught out by Fresh, but Fresh has to backtrack himself after taking a tickle of damage. 12 teams, 32 players. Unicorns of Love currently on zero kills in this game, but do have the western edge of the circle in their hands. I do spot a player in the water. It could be a big brain play. It could go horribly wrong. I respect it, though, when you feel like it's desperate times, desperate measures. Can a Fresh find one apiece? the hands of game lord and they pick them up it's a lack of nostra mvp the two remaining players that makes sense but it is going to kind of go against them as the circle shifts to the northeast into the compound where guys and seraph and hold on to conqueror might be looking to push in on that i don't know if it's gonna work out i don't know how much information reese has on Gaijin's position, and Mishi was prepared for that. Cooked up a pre-grenade, found Reznov, and that's gonna be Vito shut down as well. At least Reeves on his own for the side of Conqueror. I get it, but it probably wasn't a right call to push through. Great de defense by Adobo, Prada, and the rest of Gaijin Seraphim, to be fair. Fresh gets knocked out, but Beg for Mercy is going to trade on. Oh, actually, finds Elysio coming in from the water side, so it's a different team in play. We're seeing a lot of players being taken down on the feed because this is phase five. The blue zone closing in the circle is awkward, and there's really not a lot of area you can protect yourself as a one player, as a two player, even as a full squad. Aethis has one of the solid positions up on the high ground as he looks for robs of game lord that us is gonna get blown up the us is taken out and that is game lord wiped out this lobby 11 teams 22 players alive that's an average of two players per team as he should have low balled that molotov eastern stars and not one is gonna get chucked in fury is gonna get knocked down Neuro Zio. I thought Game Lord were out. My apologies. Game Lord still has one player up. That is my bad. But Victor gets found. And now it's a Game Lord out of this game. Eight teams, 18 players left up. Sorry, wait, wait. Game Lord, maybe, maybe Game Lord are still in this game. What? Okay, 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 okay. I'm having a bad job of keeping track of uh, these teams. Oof. Give a shout out to Nightmare. I, I love Nightmare, bro. Much love to him. Unicorns of love. Staying on the coastline. Keeping two players up. Fresh Ked in play. But Clash. Not going to be afraid to do some damage. Azer ticks. Grenade. That's going to be well cooked over the lip of the hill. That is the perfect grenade by aids or that wasn't even a two-pointer that wasn't even a three-pointer that was a five pointer murder she wrote grenade by azer and now we are left with seven teams up eastern stars being put under a hell of a lot of pressure by clash clash are the gatekeepers of this world is acer i don't know why he went into the blue zone to try and loot up but he got knocked down for his efforts 
uh, could allow Eastern Stars to get the revive off and stay in the, this game. Eastern Stars is the only team that's inside the circle on the western edge. That's something that is of a benefit to Eastern Stars. GSG Europe have to move out. Optimus Esports have to move out. The last player of Black Sparks has to move out. And Gaijin Seraphin also have to move out. GSG have three players up in this game as Blen gets knocked down. And taken out. Bangers left in his own. Mishi Adobu and Prada push in now to uh, the center of the circle across the road. While Optimus Esports and GSG Europe fight. And that's going to be GSG Europe wrapping things up quite nicely. And taking down Optimus just like that at the drop of a hat. With the blue zone of phase 6 closing in. It was important that they did get that fight off in quick fashion and indeed they pulled it off very quickly Dash playing on the upper parts of the hill this position is currently outside the surface so they're still going to look to take advantage of that as Lau is going to ride into the arms of MZ with that motor bike but Adlito down on the sidelines Adlito gets knocked down and Kamara is left on his own in a 1v2 coming in on towards the side of truck trucks out of smoke but it's gonna be Azer that finds him in the end and Azer takes him down and Azer racks up more kills in this game for the French side full squad up sorry three players up for Clash coming into the final Moments of this game phase six closing into phase seven clash have control they have a drop they have all the gear needed to take this game by the scruff of the neck i don't know if they're aware though that banger the last player for black sparks got crossbowed in the first wrangle game will be very very hopeful that it won't happen in this second game He's not going to be making any noise. Have the trigger discipline to try and at least get your team into second place. Could be a sneaky first if he's able to catch out one or two of the Clash players while they're so focused on to the side of Gaijin and Seraphim. Because they're going to look at that and go, okay, well, it's going to be a clean v 3v3. No, that's not going to be the case. As Gaijin are confirmed up, they'll know the sounder kill feed and they're wondering, where is the last player left? The next circle centers up. Bangers left in his own. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. All he has is the land, the grass, the snake position, and a pocket full of dreams as he's in a 1v3. He could edge his way closer to the top of the hillside. But uh, as MZ is going to look to go uh, traveling away, he's going to notice that MZ is wrapping around. Banger is going to... Move away, and Azer is aware of that, and Azer is going to uh, cause a bit of a distraction. Sorry, MZ causes a bit of a distraction as Azer gets knocked down, but it is going to be Azer that finishes things, things off for the side of Clash as they do pick up the chicken dinner in a wrangle. Nine kills for Azer in that game. Nine kills in that game for Azer alone. Absolutely fantastic. Mwah. Chef's Kiss game from Clash. Chef's Kiss performance from Clash in that game. They started things off by getting two kills onto Lacanoster MVP. When that circle shifted massively down the, the southeast, what they could have done, they could have played it a little bit more unorthodox, a little bit more orthodox, a little bit more standard by you know, kind of coming in on the northwestern edge, just kind of taking it safe. But sometimes the unorthodox rotation, especially very early on into a circle shift, like they pulled off, is better because teams aren't necessarily prepared to take a fight at that point because the circle has just shifted and they're thinking about their position. It's not as focus-friendly on teams around you. And they took advantage of that because Unicorns of Love had themselves separated. They were able to get initial kill onto Unicorns of Love and control the position around them from there on. And they did a great job of doing that. 
a little bit of help from Unicorns Love, who took down Lacanosha MVP for the most part. Of course, other teams were taking each other out, but at the end of the day, Flash controlled that game perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Let's have a look at the highlights of this second game again. We uh we saw Rescue and Black Sparks fight in the crates of George Bull. Dexter with the 1v2 against one shot UDR. Sushi on the other side took down Sandro. And that was all she wrote for one shot UDR in this game to an Arangle. Conqueror then also taking the fight against Destiny, coming out on top quite nicely. Vito. Uh, played perfectly in that engagement, picking off two of the players right there. Absolutely great stuff towards the end of this game with the circle shifts. They were absolutely crazy. A grenade by Azer was. I, I don't think I've seen a better nade. Azer, I don't think I've seen a better nade. Just know that, like, I literally don't think I've seen a better nade. Great play by GSG Orb to take out Optimus Esports, right? Because they were in a position where they knew they technically had to go through a team directly in front of them. And instead of trying to go around them and then getting pinched by both Clash and Optimus, they took the fight against Optimus. And at least they got a couple of kills before they got taken out. 32 points for Clash as they do pick up this second game. 17 kills. So it's the exact same as game one in terms of kills for the winning team. Black Sparks with 16 kills. A good consistent game two for them as well. Gaijin Seraphin with 13 points. GSG Europe with 12 points. Eastern Stars really buying their way to 10 points. And Conqueror with 8 points. Again, a low placement. High kills for Conqueror. It's pretty standard stuff. Similar to uh, game number one. Top three are all players from the winning team when it comes to the kill stats. Azer, Trazen, and MZ all up there. Nine, four, and four. Then uh, in terms of damage, not quite as much damage from the highest player in this game too, but no doubt Azer with 983, just shy of 1,000. Trazen with 924, and then Vito from Conqueror in third with 705. Between the top three Clash players, 980, 980, and then I think like just under 700. Pretty, pretty impressive indeed. This is standings from all teams after uh, 10 games. Uh, Destiny still hold on to the top spot. Um, Scrim Farm with 107 points. Conqueror at 93. Nexus with 91. Black Sparks with 89. Simples, if you want to make a note of the top three, you're more than welcome to. And then put it in chat. That'd be super appreciated. But, uh, a great, um, yeah. A great, uh... Look at the standings from uh, from these teams overall coming into the game number three for today. There was meant to be a, a day of games last week, but not, not enough teams confirmed and it was cancelled. So it technically should be, you know, 18 games played, but it's 10. Even though this is day four, we haven't had a day of games. So yeah, that's it. That is it, and it, 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 it's, I know that teams probably aren't taking these scrims very seriously, even though they're official PMPL scrims, uh, so, you know, that's why we're seeing, like, the top team get maybe probably more kills than you might see in other situations or other, you know, tournaments, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen to PMPL, but uh, two games in a row, we've had the top team get 17 kills. It, it's, it, it echoes what is uh, the situation of um, 
what is the situation of how seriously these teams are are taking these uh these scrims so let's just see when this uh next game is going to start then i can set a timer so at least i know when i'm going back live you know when i'm going back live and then we can go from there so on that note i'm going to uh go for a break but i will be back on your screens in about five minutes for game number three here of the pmpl eu west official screams Living every day
And we are back. We're going to be getting into game number three of the day in a couple of minutes. I thought I'd essentially go live before the um, game begins. Just essentially just to kind of one. Uh, so it's not as boring for you guys looking at a timer in two. So I can kind of uh, interact with uh, all you guys. And you know what, Roy Boy? Shout out to you, my friend. Shout out to you, Roy Boy Gaming uh, in the chat. Much love to you, my friend. I know I said I don't do shoutouts by request, but no, well, there you go, my friend. Thank you to everybody as well to uh, for tuning and supporting. You know, Kaz, as I said to you during the last game, shout out to you, man, for supporting Lacanostra MVP and you know for for watching and supporting the team that 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 you love and that that really that really is awesome, man. It, it, it's really kick ass, dude. Uh, it, it's a big. It's one of the big reasons why. Uh, I really love esports and Pudgy Mobile esports. That the, the passion from the community is uh, fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. When does PMPL West in Europe start? It starts on May the 17th. That's when it starts. It starts May the 17th. So, uh, yeah, be, uh, be prepared for what is going to be some pretty intense action as well. Like, it's great because, uh, you know, there's currently... We've had PMPL Americas and we've had PMPL South Asia. Now we have PMPL uh, CIS and PMPL Turkey, which I'm trying to keep up with those. Then you're going to have PMPL Europe. And then you obviously have, like, the Americas Finals and you have PMPL Brazil that's been going on as well. There's so much PUBG Mobile esports action going on. Like, this is crazy. Like... PUBG Mobile Esports is is honestly at the center of mobile esports at the moment, really. It's, in my opinion, it's overall the blueprint. Not everything is perfect, of course. 110% not everything is perfect. But when you're talking about an ecosystem, when you're talking about a blueprint and, and leading the way, um, mobile esports is there. Big time. Big time. Big time. You know, and, and it's just so good to see. It's absolutely fantastic to see. So look, on that note, we are indeed into game number three. So let's transition over to it. And uh, let's see what the playing path brings us. Of course, for this game three, we have groups A, B, D, and E. So no unicorns of love. No Black Sparks, no GSG Orb, and no Rescue. But we do welcome back Eastern Stars, One Shot UDR, Clash, and Game Lord. Now, over the last couple of weeks, Eastern Stars have shown themselves to be very strong in Miramar. Very excited to see what uh, comes out from them in this third game this is the only miramar game of the day as well so when it comes to maybe trying something practice wise trying something else uh in in miramar engagements rotations now's your time to do it i suppose now's your time to do it that plane path is going from the east to the northwest so it is a uh, for the most part, quite a northerly circle. Uh, curious to see. Uh, it's actually it's okay because there's no unicorns. Love. I, I, I was thinking, where are they gonna go? Because they normally go to Missara, but they're not in the lobby. Uh, the phase one massively complements that plain path. Conquer have Picado. However, what I like about Conquer is that they're recognizing that we can not only grab a vehicle. But we can maybe even split drop and loot up and then move out and maybe join up around the graveyard area and the hills of graveyard. Or will they all end up still going to Picado? Interesting. Because the phase one does complement the plane path, it's going to allow Umber to really stay where they are in the Minas and just move up a tiny bit up north to the hills of Minas Generalis. Cruz de Val, we're going to see Rice Gang and Optimus Esports fight. 
they have done this before in the PMPL EU West scrims, but in the Unicorns Love X Vernic League that's been going on, on over the past couple of weeks. Both teams have like avoided each other in this area and they've opted to kind of move away. Thank you, Robey. Thank you, Kaz. Appreciate the compliments. I can ask your MVP. Haven't really seen, personally, I haven't seen them pull off anything massive since that uh, Sandhawk game a couple of weeks ago, right? Since then, they felt, to me, a little bit flat. Oh, Caster misses the Winchester shot onto that player of Rice Gang. Reposition around the wall side. I like that from Caster. It's something simple, but it can make such a big difference. You take a shot, you reposition. Take a shot, reposition. All quiet on the western front of this phase number one. 25 seconds until the blue zone is going to start closing in. Hello to you, Swapnil Sarma. How are you doing, my friend? Much love to you. Interesting strategy by Optimus. It does seem like they're looking to try and pinch Rice Gang either side. That's not a bad idea, but to me, that pinch, that sandwich really needs to be a surprise attack, and it hasn't been a surprise attack. And because Muzi and Salazar are kind of out in the open, even if they get a knock, I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything about that. For this sandwich to work, in my opinion, it requires Castor and Halzino to push more aggressively across the road, right? Allow Halzino and Salazar to distract Carno Nexus and Nightmare, right? Allow their backs to be turned. I know there's still cakes around the area, but still. <laughs> Thank you, Roy Boy. Thank you, man. There's a lot of fantastic hosts and commentators in the world of put you mobile esports. All I do is just try my best to bring a level of entertainment and and positivity and joy from the games. But yeah, and and it seems like that's what they've done, which I really like. Caster has moved across, but Hazino hasn't. And I think that really needs to be a two-man push. It can't be a solo push because if Caster gets knocked, that's that engagement just essentially shut down instantly. I also do wonder where is the fourth player of Rice Gang? I know I have the perspective of knowing where Optimus Esports are. But how aware are Rice Gang? Both teams are on the very edge of the circle. Technically, you don't need to move. But of course, the longer it's taking for them to loot up, the harder it's going to be to secure a strong pot in spot inside this phase on circle. Of course, they can move very shortly onto the Lazar Hills, which gives them a great elevated position to a more southern, um, to the kind of center of the circle, or at least to the to the um, Minas Generalis uh, mountains that Umber hold on to, right? So they'll be able to get an idea of where God's and Seraphim are, as an example. Game Lord and Clash, both uh, dropping on the western side of the map. I don't think we've had any team fights, to be fair. Uh, so 13 teams, 51 players in this Game number three of the day.
<laughs> I wish PUBG will not replace you from commentary, to be honest. Well, I, I hope to not be replaced, but I am also aware that many people uh, deserve to uh, get opportunities in the world of PUBG Mobile Esports, and I will always fight for my opportunities and fight for... Uh, Try to earn as much as I can in, in, in events in the world of esports as a whole. Thank you very much, though, Kaz. It means a lot. Conquer and Lacanoster MVP taking a couple of shots towards each other. Just a tickle, a poke. A bit of a how's your father? A little bit of hey, you know, we're here. You're there. Just be aware. Some nice shots between Dark and Elysio on to uh, one of the Conqueror players. Play zone takes down Nightmare. Uh, what? Nightmare? Don't you have any heals? All teams are now in the blue zone. It's only phase one blue zone, so it's not like... That damage is massive. Now, I don't know if a blue zone knock is showing up as a specific player. So I don't think Optimus will be aware that there's a player from Bryce Gang knock. If they did, I'm pretty sure they would push on it. Phase 2 has shown up on our screens. And it's gone a bit up north. So it has, for the most part, centered quite heavily. It leaves the... Hills of San Martin open. I wouldn't say for the taking. A scrim farm hack shot? Playing for scrim farm? Really? Okay. Is that just a temporary thing? Or is it for the whole of uh, PMPL? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Eastern Stars takes down Mishi of Gaijin Seraphin. Eastern Stars land in Impala. They move in from Impala. They make Impala and the surrounding areas their bitch in this game. Oh, I just said a curse word. Again, the tickles are becoming a bit more powerful between these two teams. You know, it, it's less of a tickle and it's more of a strangle now. It's not so much the full choking. But it's definitely more of a, you know, aggressive gasp between both teams. Will wrapping around, flanking. It's going to get knocked down with that buggy. Poor move by Lacanostra and McGee and Will specifically. If you're gonna go for a flank, you gotta be absolutely sure that that flank is gonna be able to be pulled off without any information. And Vito's gonna fire up by knocking down Elysio. Danny and Dark gonna look to drive away, but in the terrain of Miramar, it's slow, it is harsh, and Danny gets blowing up to smithereens, and Dark is left on his own. One mistake is all it takes, especially against a team like Conqueror, right? You make that one mistake, you're going to take advantage of it. Cheeky third party for Mishi to capitalize on Conqueror's push and take down Vito. Nothing you can really do in that situation. Uh, Nexus also finds Reznov of Conqueror. Okay, Conqueror. Feels bad, man. That's a fourth party going against you. Oof. Wait, whoa, 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 your friend? What is your friend playing for? Scrim Farm? Are you serious? Big Gabby? Because I haven't seen, like. I forget who your friend used to play for. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Nah, definitely not. Not. Uh, I, I, yeah, thank you, Kaz. I, I don't show favoritism. I don't, you know, I don't show bias. I always try and make sure that I'm straight down the middle when it comes to my commentary. Just like Umbra are straight down the middle of this 
Phase number two, moving into phase three, it centers off quite nicely. The Labadita train is in play, and it's a very good place for Eastern Stars. Oh, yeah, Neurozeo. Isn't that previously known as Z Neurofen? Did he change his name to Neurozeo? Either way, they could go to the Labadita Hills. Eastern Stars could if they wanted to, but they're opting to go to Minas Generalis, which I do not agree with. Talon is separated quite heavily away from the rest of his Umbra team. I don't know how well he's going to be able to get out of this mess while Rice Gang coming in from the north. Bingo! He did play for Bloodline. Yes, so he has played for this team. And then he played for No Hate. Thank you. It it can be so hard to keep up with, with changing players and changing rosters. And talking about changing, um, a changing of, of the outcome of this fight as Destiny go for a push on the Conqueror and they get taken down massively. So Destiny would just name out left on his own in the back line. Noshi beats and Mishi really, uh, you know, Came up against a brick wall that is Conqueror in uh, in this Miramar game and paid the price. Splattered against the wall. Oh, Neymad, Neymad, my dear Neymad, what are you going to be able to do? All on your lonesome with nowhere to go. Gonna have to be the snake of your squad. See, it's only direct on the game itself. I saw many commentaries as favoritism. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, definitely not for me to comment on that one. It is, however, my job to comment on the action that is unfolding right on our screen. Take only was knocked down, but to get revived up. I don't know if that's enough time to really have a massive impact on the outcome of this one. The scrim farm off the back of winning game one. Looking to take the fight against the winners of game two. But Azer's left on his own nine kills. He got in the last game of a wrangle. Can he get this 1v1 against Spectre? Playing on the high ground. Gets a couple of tick shots on the Spectre, but not enough. Azer finds it. He takes him down. He's going to get the squad up on the scrim farm. And he's going to get the revives off to keep Clash up. As a full squad. My god, Azer, you are an absolute goddamn freaking monster. The next circle shifts over to the east, away from Game Lord, one shot UDR, Clash. And uh, the three-man conqueror team. Umber now on the northeastern edge. Rice Gang in the heart of Minas Generalis. We'll have to move down to the southern eastern side across the road. They should stay on the very tip of Minas Generalis. As you're able to get high ground, you're able to look in to the bottom of the barrel that is this phase four circle. With this kind of shift, no team, in my opinion, will want to be in the center of this phase unless they are absolutely certain that it's safe, clear, and free. All of these remaining 10 teams, 35 players, for the most part, will be playing on the edge of the circle, especially the teams that are far outside of it, like we see on our screens, one-shot UDR and Game Lord. Pocus... Tried to back away, got taken out. Similar to what happened to Lack and Oster MVP, and now the push is gonna come in. One shot UDR. Don't know whether to come, whether to go, whether to stay, or whether to move in and take this fight. As Victor is gonna wrap around, Monsus gets another knock on the Sandro. Sebi is going to uh, try and back away from these buildings while the shots are being laid down by Victor. Come on. Just two more. There you go. You got it, my friend. Nice play by Victor. They know where the last two players of UDR are and up from the high buildings up above. 
We're gonna see Rob's going to engage for it as Victor supporting him. Nice Molotov being thrown out, but you're on your own in a 1v2. You get one, you get focused down, but where's the support from the rest of the team? Indeed, now Victor's going to use that minivan as the blue zone is closing in. That makes sense. Do not go for the revive. Go for the 1v1. Okay. Uh, maybe that was a bad call. Where's the rest of Game Lord? This was... Yeah, okay, Game Lord. What the hell was that? What in the blue hell was that? I am kind of speechless. Game Lord go down. One shot UDR go down. Yeah, I know, Kaz. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Conquer. Have the southwestern uh, side of the circle. Very, very good spot for them to hold down. Because even though it's somewhat in the open, you got a little bit of low ground behind them. You got the slightly higher ground in front of them. Well, not slightly higher ground, but more of a flat ground in front of them. But there's those ridges that they're able to really play around and spread across, depending on this next circle shift, of course. I know, I know, I know. I I, I don't know what happened to them either. It was one of the biggest Fs ever as the next circle centers up once again. There's one compound? Inside the center of the circle that is unoccupied, but I don't know how much information Rice Gang has on that compound if they know whether there's a squad there or not. Umbra going up against Clash, but the third party from Conquer is going to put Clash under pressure. MZ's knocked down, Azer's knocked down, MZ's on. Uh, gonna get knocked down. Hey, Coney is left on his own. Can he pull off the big brain play? I don't know if he can. He's gonna try and make his way around the side. Look for the revive. A PRZ is gonna stop that from happening as he chucks a grenade going into FPB mode. Nice play by Team Umber. BRZ, PRZ baiting Hey, Coney out into the open while Swave looks to swipe him from forward and he peeks on up. Gets the kill through the window. Peekaboo, I see you. Clash are wiped out of this game. Six teams left, 16 players up. Thank you, Shrag. Really means a lot. Really means a lot, my friend. Yeah, they should have pushed all together. I get why Victor went on his own, but there should have been... I don't know. He should have been on his own to make sure that they didn't confirm the kill. On the Robs, and I, I was expecting the rest of Game Lord to support. That's why I kind of said Victor take the kind of 1v1. Because I expect the Game Lord to be supporting them. In the end, end up going against them. Conqueror going deep for the compound. Nexus there as well. So they're going to be fighting for it in the end. As Talon finds Rana from behind. So it's not looking the absolute safest for Nexus, even though they have the compound in the grasp of their hands. As he gets inside, the bike is going to join up Reznov and Reese, the two R's of Conqueror. As they stay down the lower side of this compound that Nexus holds on to, Team Umbra. With a 2-1 split talon on the high ground. Rice Gang still up as a full squad. They haven't really made too much noise. They're on one kill. Neymar gets spot out. That's the end of Destiny, unfortunately. He did survive up until 6. So got him himself and his team a couple more points. Eastern Star is still in the game as the next circle somewhat goes in their favor. And the compound uh, Nexus push for, fortunately, has gone away from them. Breeze and the Conqueror crew on the very, very edge of the circle in the open fields. They do have Eastern Stars putting them under pressure from the other side of the circle. Reeves goes down at the hands of PRZ from behind. Great. 
double trouble play from PRZ and Swave, respectfully. Imumbra building up their synergy coming into the PMPL. Rice Gang Carno on the aim, but still. They have the players off to make a big impact in this game. Conquer go down. Dexter from Nexus is going to get that one up. And that does create a little bit more freedom for them to move out of the compound into the circle. But with Rice Gang taking advantage of this little hillside dip. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'd say taking advantage, but it seems like... Eastern Stars got the elevation point needed to keep Rice Gang under pressure. Carno's going to get taken down, and that's the end of Rice Gang. Neurozeal, formerly Neurofan, played for Bloodline in the past. Also played for No Hate, but he's back in this team and with a bang as a sole survivor for Eastern Stars in this game. 11 kills for the team and 8 for himself what a way to make an impact he might only be screamed but still what a way to make an impact he has to be careful not to overextend that rock peak shoot peak shoot do not allow yourself to be victimized you become the victim or that's not even a word but i'm making it a word Become the legend killer within Eastern Stars. As you see the blue zone of face closing. Like I said, you can't overpeak a little bit too much. Take the shot needed and do what you can. Might be able to find Sushi, but unfortunately, he's pulling off a first aid. And in that time, Sushi is moving down the hill. However, Sway from the other angle, from the other side, does take down Sushi. And Norozio steals that one away. Kill number nine. For Norozio in this game as we're down to our final three teams. Five players up. Three V1, V1, but one of the Nexus players is knocked down and the circle goes in the favor of Norozio. Doesn't have to move away from the hill. He finds Swave with the tappy tap shots. That's going to be... Kill number 10. Double digits for that one player alone. Mmm. Spicy meatball. Absolutely spicy meatball. But it's 1v3. The two Romanian teams in the top two. I talked at the start of the game how Eastern Stars are fantastic and have proven themselves to be fantastic in Miramar. Oh, indeed. He peeks up. And that's going to be Dexter. Cleaning the game for Nexus for a 4RM as they do get the chicken dinner. Find themselves with, I think, seven kills. But you know what? Like, it doesn't really matter because, like, as much as I respect Nexus for being able to take the win, yeah, that was a Norozio show, right? That was the Eastern Star show when it came to. It was like 10 kills for Neurozio alone. Yeah. Change, change his name. It's had a positive impact. I like it. I like it. So good from him alone. So good from him alone. Let me just uh, put some music on. Background. Okay. So, so good. Binny Ba, indeed. Binny Ba between Eastern Stars and Nexus coming in the top two. Binny Ba, my friends. While we're waiting for the stats to uh, show up on our screens, um... Thank you once again to everybody for tuning in to these scrims for supporting the stream. Feel free to throw out a like. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't. And any feedback is always recommended. Always recommended. So uh, I'm going to try and time the transition at the exact same time. Kind of. 
kind of well that's a highlights this is the highlights for this game number three in miramar the only miramar game of the day zoo is god but in romanian language thank you Adre, so neuro god so he's changing from your fan to neuro god interesting interesting fun fact did you know that norofen is the name of a of a product that is hell is, is is to help relieve pain it's a pain relief product that you can get over the counter in in ireland and the uk at least it's called norofen so uh that's it you know norofen's name always stood out but neurozeo stands out a little bit more especially now knowing the meaning of Zeo is a god in Romanian language and Kaz you're from Philippines that is awesome man wow thank you for tuning in and supporting from the Philippines seriously like dude that's wow wow man that's a uh, that really means a lot man really means a lot dude really means a lot yeah that was the end of the game in the end Dexter clean things up as we see the points for that individual game. Eastern Stars with 25 points, 13 kills. Even though they didn't win the game, they still got the highest amount of points, right? 13 kills and 10 of them coming from... Uh... Oh, you can get you can get your friend in Romania as well. I didn't know you could. George, thank you for that information. Nexus with 7 kills, they get 22 points. Team Umbra with 5 kills get... 15 and hey conquer they, they may not be conquering the games in terms of winning but in terms of consistency they've been very consistent in the first four games and to be fair may not be may not be placement heavy consistency but it is kill heavy consistency and for the most part i think it's uh it's positive because conquer are the kind of team that can be kind of hit that can be hit and miss at times they really can't be hit and miss eastern stars neuro zeo with 10 kills in that game alone head over heels ahead of everybody else Azzy with five dexter with five ulysses with three nice to see Azzy up there one of the most dangerous players in european pubg mobile individually there's still two more games today, Kaz, by the way. There's still two more games today. Norazio with 1,100 damage and those 10 kills. Like, that damage to kill ratio from Norazio was perfect. Absolutely perfect. And it's 3 a.m. for you, Kaz? Insane. So, are you going to go now because it's 3 a.m.? And then, if you're going to go, I totally understand. Um, and if you are going to go, have a good night. This is the overall standings. At the end of this game, Destiny still with 130 points, Nexus with 113, Scrim Farm with 108, Anchor with 105. I don't know if that's up to date. Why does it not feel up to date? That's weird. It just doesn't feel up to date. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel up to date. Okay, you're going to watch Awesome Cast. Yeah, no, there's still two more games, my friend. All the information in terms of the amount of games are in the are in the description. By the way, on a side note, uh, you know, so you do know. There's two more games in Sandhawk to go, so those two games are going to be pretty action-packed, to be fair. Um, let me just set a timer so I know when the next match is going to start. Um... Not bad, not bad. Okay. There once was a ship that put to sea. The name of the ship was a. Hey, this song is so weird, but I'm gonna skip it. I'm just uh, setting the timer. Okay, cool. You know what? I'm going to go for a break. Rest my voice a little bit. Get a cup of coffee. And I'll be back in your screens in five minutes. See you guys then.
I'm back. EMPL, EUS scrims, my name is Imperium. Thank you for hanging out for me today. Hanging out for me? Hanging out with me today, or tonight, or this morning, wherever you are in the world, as it's currently like past 3 a.m. where Kaz is. And I have a question for you, Kaz. If you're from Philippines, where does the love for lack of Nostra MVP come from? I'm super curious about that. You know, where does your connection or your love for Laka Nostra MVP, you know, resonate from? Definitely curious if you're able to uh, give me a bit of an answer. Always appreciate it. But indeed, we are getting into game number four out of five of these wonderful, wonderful PMPL EU West scrims. My name is Imperium. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to have groups A, C, D, and E for this game number four. So for the first of two Sandhawk games, we do not have Team Umbra, Destiny, Panda, or Gaijin, Seraphin. So, uh, yeah, uh, but we do welcome back Unicorns of Love, Black Sparks, GSC Orb, and uh, Rescue. Now, Rescue, I've obviously had a nightmare. Thank you, Andrew. Really means a lot. Obviously, Rescue have had a nightmare. They're the UK representatives. They have a nightmare. Have had a nightmare of a of a start to tonight's scrims because uh, both uh, the Arangal games they landed on. Um, they landed on uh, 
South Crates with Black Sparks. They got taken out. Uh, they took a break in game three. Hopefully they can come back in this game four. So we're in game four, we are in to Sanhok, baby. Let's get this show on the road. Plane path is uh, not too bad. Can't complain. Uh, now, we, we know that like the plane path of Sanhok doesn't really matter too much. I oh, that's weird with the with the uh, graphic in the in the kind of background. I don't know what's going on there, but either way, um, obviously a bit of a graphical error. Uh, because we don't have actually no, wait. So Scrim Farm are not dropping in Atin. Are Scrim Farm testing a different drop spot? Very interesting. For the most part, over the last couple of weeks, they've been dropping in Hating with Conqueror whenever both teams have been playing. Ah, it's just that I was fascinated about the way they play and teaching a noob about the game, just like me. That's that's awesome, Kaz. I really love that, dude. I, I, I absolutely love that, man. You know, much love to you, my friend. Yeah, very curious with Scrim Farm and not going to Hatting because I don't think they'd like, you know, lost too many of the of the of the battles in Hatting. If anything, for the most part, I feel like they had been doing much better. Yeah. Oh well. Maybe they're preparing for stuff. You know. Danny is a Danny's a great guy from Lack and Austria MVP. Well, hello, Pref Professor Tarzan. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, how are you doing, my friend? How was the rest of the club open scrims for you, my dude? How was the rest of the club open scrims? I hope they were well. I didn't get to check out all the games because I had to prepare for uh, my own casting, but I uh, hope you had fun. Lack and Austria MVP dropping in Pine Ant. All under lonesome, no contention as of right now. Phase one does seem to be on the mainland for the most part. It's definitely not heavily towards the southwest island because Black and Nostra MVP are on the south southwestern edge of the circle. Love from Nepal, love from DE fam. Love to you and all of Nepal, Codex Phoenix. A dead eyes guys OP Nepal OP. Unicorns of love. The galloping horses, the prancing rainbow colored horses of unicorns of love dropping down in Paradise Resort as per usual. While GSG Europe have boot camp in the palm of their hands. I do notice that Kamara, for whatever reason, took a little bit of damage, I think, from across the way. Still, uh, it does keep GSG on high alert, and it means that they have to shift up their rotation as Andalito sends himself up to boot camp hill. Makes sense. It's a really good rotation for them. It was good, mate. Always good to have you dropping by. Yeah, man. Of course, always try and support as I can. You know yourself, mate. And we must get that catch up in, in soon. Maybe maybe tomorrow or uh, or Thursday. Some of the day, if you're free, man, we'll, we'll have a bit of a catch up. It'd be great, man. Black Sparks wrapping around the one of the hill. I think they, they have a 2 2 split as of right now. Not quite exactly sure where they are, <laughs> to be fair. I was, I was thinking it was somewhere else, but I might not be quite sure. But they do spot out a caster of Optimus Esports. Hey, Big Lord, how are you getting on, man? Great shots by Banger to knock down Caster. Now, what kind of response will Optimus give us? I know Unicorn's Love will be aware of the shots that were fired up. Looking all over, we see a 2 2 split for Rice Gang as they look down the bottom of the hill where Lacanostra MVP currently hold on to those buildings. 
Anger confirms that kill without getting knocked himself. Very important. But he needs to try and back away because Optimus are still going to know he's there. However, Phoenix of Unicorns of Love gets a third party knock onto another of the Optimus Esports players. The fight between Lack and Austria MVP and Rice is going on strong as Cakes off the back of the revive is going to switch on through to get the knockdown on Elicio. Not so much Chow Maria for now for Lack and Austria MVP. Danny's going to stay in the back line. Will is going to get revived off. Dark goes forward, but with the lack of information, is going to try and get to the rock. Is going to get knocked down by Nexus on the off angle. That was a poor play by Dark. You should have known that was the case that they had your number. Eggs pushes forward off the back of chucking out a grenade. Going to play on top of the rock. A higher elevated position. Perfectly placed. Smoke, though. It seems by Lacanostra MVP to try and block... Division of Rice Gang. Arno gonna go even more for Cakes. You need to support him. You need to support him. That needs to come through as a duo and D Cakes to support him. Great play. Carno now gonna be keeping the pressure on as Danny gets knocked. He leaves Elicio left on his own. Elicio gonna try and fight for the right. The party. Carno got knocked down. Elicio is gonna be trying to hold on, but Nightmare from behind is going to clean up. Laka Nostra MVP. Overall, good engagement from Rice Gang. Little bit disconnected. Where Carno, that like, I get where Cakes was in the elevated position, but I really feel in that moment she should have been with Carno. Because I think at that point they had control of the fight where they didn't need a support player. Whereas, because even though she was effective in her positioning, in hindsight, it probably would have stopped Carno from being confirmed. And that's it. Right? That's it. The next circle shifts on up and it is indeed a mainland circle. That's good for most of the teams. There's none of this. Uh, is it going to be this side? Is it going to be that side? Is it going to be this uh, island? Is it going to be that island? So that's that's good. That's really good. So let me just uh, read out your answer, Kaz. Before is totally new, but I've only got one to five frags per game. Maybe five is the highest before. But when Danny teach about aiming and strategies, how to control recoil, it make a big difference for me a lot. That's really great to hear, Kaz. See, that's the thing. Like, you know, we can all have our, our favorite teams. We can all have our, you know, teams that we support. And we can always, you know... Have have teams we prefer. That's always allowed. But the most important part is that we're here for the same reason, which is to play the game, enjoy the game, and to try and teach each other a little bit more. And if you're getting taught a little bit from Danny, that's amazing. That's really amazing. He has a lot of experience and makes me makes me super happy to, to hear, to be fair. Super happy to hear, my friend. As game goes on, 12 teams left, 47 players, GSG Europe. Uh, on the outskirts of Paradise Resort. They moved up from boot camp, so very good rotation from GSG Europe. I love it. And keeping that one player kind of more on the outside of the compound is super healthy. Uh, might be a bit more of a risk, but even going up onto the upper northern hill might allow him to get a bit more information. But principally... So they're keeping all four in the houses. They are definitely a lot more prepared now. Four team breaching in. will give them the ability to possibly control a couple more of those fights. Unicorns of Love still opting to stay in Paradise Resort. I'm not a fan of that. I know it's only phase two. But uh, it's very risky to leave it so late in Paradise Resort. I know they have one player kind of on the outside down on the southern tip of, of of the resort but i just don't think it's enough and i think that spread is a little bit too dangerous uh i might be wrong it's just kind of what i think because i know how easy it can be to 
have teams wrap around Paradise Resort and you don't really have the information. You know? All of Black Sparks now looking up towards Unicorns of Love. Release fresh individually. So fresh is kind of holding down Black Sparks. I wouldn't say all on his lonesome, but there is an element of he's the only player from Unicorns of Love that is there. Now, if he gets knocked, I don't think Black Sparks will be able to fully push that. But again, because of you know, as a loves the separation, it's going to become a bit harder. Getting ready for phase number three. Conqueror moved away from Hating quite early because they weren't fighting against Scrim Farm. They went into Cow. Sorry, Tatmok, should I say, leaving Reeves on the hills to the east of it. Perfectly done by Conqueror, similar to what. GSG Europe did. The next circle does uh, go up north for the most part. However, still Paradise is in the center of the circle. Unicorns of Love under a little bit of a false sense of, sense of security as they will probably stay in the Paradise Resort compound for the most part. One shot UDR. Eastern Stars, two teams that land on the eastern side of the map in Kampong and Lukwai. No doubt uh, there is always going to be a chance that they were going to uh, start battling against each other. Sebi, Sandro, together, getting the better of uh, Eastern Stars in a massive way. I don't know why we're not panning over to that fight. Fortunately, they choose us to keep it on Kamaru, who's just taken a couple of needless shots. That's a missed opportunity to show a fight. Thank you very much, Observers. Really means a lot. <laughs> Shut up, Tarzan. <laughs> nice, nice copy pasta, my friend. Nice copy pasta. Scram farm now wrapping around. Nice by Spectra. I don't think Rana has any idea, but Rana needs to. Start hearing the footsteps, I think he does, but it could be too little, too late indeed. Spectre gets a knock, prones down instantly, making sure that he's not counter-knocked. However, he needs to come up and support AWM. Detati, AWM, Detati's going to try and hold it down. Sushi's going to come in and get the knockdown with the help of Dexter, who's low in health himself. 1v2. 1v2 is Nexus. Try and look to get the better of Scrim Farm. Two D teams are preparing heavily for the PMPL. Two D teams have a massive potential to come out of the PMPL in the number one spot. Romania as a region, as a country, has evolved so much over the last year, year and a half. And to see teams like Nexus... And Eastern Stars represent Romania at this high of a level is very big and very respectful. Sushi gets a knock with the grenade on the Spectre. AWN Tati is now left on his own. It's prone down. It is... Oh my god, it's a 4v1 because Nexus weren't confirmed. I thought Nexus were confirmed. I thought Rana was confirmed. But because that wraparound by Spectre, maybe, I wouldn't say took a little bit too long, but because it worked out, but he didn't confirm. He had to join up with Detati. Didn't confirm the kill. And that's left the Nexus up as a full squad. Insane. Wow. You got 290 and 320 MS from Philippines. Bro, just move to Europe. Easy. <laughs> Next circle pops up. It goes up northwest into the arms of Game Lord and Conqueror for the most part. This is good for Unicorns a lot because now they can utilize Paradise to automatically overall control 
the southeastern side of the circle because no team, for the most part, will want to go through Paradise Resort at this stage of the game. You'll want to go around it. So, Unicorns of Love have an automatic bubble surrounding their Paradise Resort position because it's shifted, for the most part, away from Paradise. Ha! <laughs> Shirag, you said the exact same thing as me. GG, man. I love it, Shirag. We had, we had the same idea, my friend. One shot UDR lost Sandra, but have two kills to their name. Taking a fight against Clash. Trayson is knocked down. Luna is trying to push in to go for that revive MZ in behind while Azer looks to keep one shot at bay. Of course, Black Sparks and Res Q. <laughs> Rescue are thinking, oh, come on. Can we not catch a break against these guys? Could be the case, though. It is realistically a 1v1 between Blood and Hamo. Luckily, Hamo does have a closer distance to the circle. He's losing that health a little bit quicker. Beautiful Molly's being thrown out by Hamo. And Blood is going to go down. Job done. Happy days. Perfectly played by Hamo Black Sparks. He only has one... First aid, is he going to go for the revive and the blend? I don't think he should. Get in that bike and just get the hell out of there, my dude. Good, good, good. You might not survive into the circle, but on that bike is going to be fair rapid moving in and might find a tiny little area on the southeastern side of the circle. One shot UDR, I believe. Really getting the most of Clash. This blend is taken down. Hamo surviving. Hamo surviving. I'm from Romania and I think UDR Killers is much better than a Romanian team as well. Hey, that's your perspective and that's your opinion and that's okay, Golden Pudgy Mobile. It's okay, my friend. You don't always have to support your, your you know, the team from the same nationality as you. Yes, Europe have been inside this compound for quite a while, but now they're going to have to move away as the next circle shifts up and centers in between a lot of these teams. I think Game Lord do still have this circle. It has gone for, I think, north, northeast. Hmm. You one shot UDR chose to go through Paradise Resort and caught out Savage X. So that bubble has been burst. Now Savage X and the rest of the Unicorns of Love crew held on to us. And now it's going to be uh, harder for them as it's Fresh and Ked that's left alive. And Ked gets knocked down. So Fresh is left on his own, not even inside the circle. Why? I say don't stay in power. That's Resort. Clash, go down. Unicorns of Love, you missed the opportunity of a lifetime. Conqueror outside the circle. Nexus are getting the better of them. Dexter popping off in the feed as per usual. A game lord having to face Rice Gang in front. They do have a closer position to the edge of the circle, but Kate is going to get knocked down with the help of Nightmare. Victor is going to also get knocked down. That is. The lack of synergy overall from Game Lord. Lunu's taken out. Like, Game Lord, you need to get your shit together. Because you have great potential, guys. Game Lord, you genuinely do. Your roster is very strong individually. But you really need to get your shit together as a team when it comes to synergy communication and engagements because if you keep on messing up like that you had a full squad there's no way you should have really seen you've lost that fight against rice gang i know rice gang went out but you lost three of your players that shouldn't have happened then the fourth player got third party feels bad man 
GSC Orb now coming in to the southeastern edge of the circle, taking down a couple of the one shot UDR players. And now it's just one left in his own. No, it was, it was actually fresh from Unicorns Love that was left up. He gets taken now. Unicorns Love are out. Three players, sorry, three teams left. Conqueror, Nexus, and GSG Europe. Nexus looking for the back to back as Conqueror go down. It is going to be 4v3. Unicorns of Love are technically an Albanian team. Super cheap. They are. You could regard them as an Albanian team. Same somewhat with Lacanostra like MVP. Kamara sees a smoke, looks to choke at a Molotov, thinking, hoping that there's a player there. I like that. The high ground is in favor of GSG Europe, but the next circle could shift away. Not exactly sure what kind of cover Nexus have, but they are in the circle for the most part. Of course, GSG Europe, they're pretty confident that they know they have the man advantage. Hey, full squad, so even if it was two other teams around them... They 110% have that body advantage. Sushi taking a bit of damage. Rana gets knocked down by Levy. Good start. Nice wrap around. Nice flank from GSC Europe. Really well played. Looking to suppress the side of Nexus. Second by second. Rain it in as the circle has gone away from Nexus. It did also go away from GSG Europe, but because they've been proactive, they've been able to shut down, slow down, and stop Nexus from entering in. They've allowed one revive, I think, to get pulled off. No, not quite. Not quite, but Dexter is still alive, and we know how good Dexter can be. Sushi is healing Rana. Z Dexter. Stays inside the building, but gets dropped down just like that. Lau was tracking them fantastically. Sushi. Now we're going to have nowhere to go. I think all the heals is given to him as Kamara finds Rana. Two more left. This is it. Sushi. That's the end of that one. GSG, your bar going to be your game for winners in the wonderful world of Sadak as Sushi makes some noise. At the end of her game. Fantastic. Chicken dinner for GSG Europe. In the first Sanoff game. And honestly. That was really down to the fact that they moved out of boot camp. Fairly early on. Yes. They technically had less traffic around them. They did. But. They were way more confident of their positioning because they moved into that area early on. And then when they did move out, they moved out in an aggressive way and in a proactive way, right? They took down one shot UDR from behind. They took down fresh last player of Unicorns Love from behind, right? They dealt with what was behind them so they could focus more on what was in front of them. Keep themselves up as a full squad was absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well played to GSG Europe. Very, very deserved chicken dinner. Really good. Let's have a look at the highlights of this game. Game 1, Scrim Farm. Game 2, Clash. Game 3, Nexus. And Game 4, GSG Europe. One more game to go. We'll see groups B, C, D and E fight it up. Great play by uh, by Rice Gang overall in, in, in that engagement. You know, because despite Carno losing his life, it was pretty well synergized uh, against Lacanoster MVP. This fight between Nexus and Scrim Farm was really interesting because um, I really thought that... Uh, I really thought that uh, Scrim Farm were going to be able to at least get one kill out of that, but not confirming any of the any of the Nexus players. Plus, Nexus being very proactive on that allowed uh, allowed themselves to be up as a full squad. Like, 
Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why were unicorns allowed positioned like that? Why? Why? Why were they there? Why were you there, guys? Seriously, why were you there? Shit place to be. My god, I've cursed way too much in these rooms, actually. I need to, uh, I need to be careful. It was a really bad place to be. Jeez, uh, corn's love. Anyway, seven kills for the winner in this first of two Sanok games. 22 points for GSG Europe, 20 for Nexus. Very even in terms of the kill feed. And that is pretty normal. That is pretty normal for, um, that is pretty normal for for a, a Sanhok game, to be fair. Conqueror getting 11 points, once again consistent. But this time, it's more in placement points than kill points. And I'm actually kind of happy about that. Actually kind of happy about that. One Shot UDR also getting 11 kills, a nice mixture. And Black Sparks with 9 kill points. Once again, getting high amount of kills, ending on 10 in total for the game. Unicorns of Love with 9 kills, only 9 points, only one of them coming... From kills alone, we do look at the highest kill leaders of the game. Hamo, followed by Nightmare, Sushi. And Kamara and Lau, both of GSD Orb in the top five. The development of Pudgy Esports is just great to see. It's also almost everywhere on the earth. Pretty much, Shirak, pretty much. Uh, match stats, uh, Dexter with the highest amount of damage. Like, Dexter is just a beast. Seriously, Dexter is just a beast. Um, sorry, Imperium, if I move out to Europe, are you gonna adopt me? Um, I did, sorry, dude. Um, I can't promise that, man. Thanks, thanks for, for, uh, for asking, but, uh, dude, sorry, man, but uh, I'm still, you, I'm, I'm still, you know, I know I'm old, but, uh, you know, I'm not in a position where I, I need a kid at the moment. But thank you. Thank you. Um, overall standings finds Destiny knocked out of the top spot. But they are only three points behind. Nexus will uh, not play this next game. So Destiny will only need three points to reclaim the top spot. Conqueror moving up to third. That consistency... Has already paid off for them. But once again, Conqueror will not play the next game. Scrim Farm with 109 points. Black Sparks with 99. Team Umbra with 96. So yeah, that is, uh, you know, your kind of top eight. Again, to remind you, the winners of the first four games have been as follows. Scrim Farm won game one. Clash won game two. Nexus won game three. And GSG Europe won game four. There's one more game to go in these scrims. It's going to be on the wonderful world of uh, Sanok once again for the final game of the day. Yeah, I know you're just joking, Kaz. Uh, I know you're just joking, my friend. Uh, it's a brilliant, nice one. I absolutely loved it. Uh, so yeah, one more game to go in Sanok once again. Thank you so much, guys, for... Uh, tuning in for for supporting the stream I'll, I'll never stop saying that i'll never stop being appreciative of of anybody and everybody that just pops in and says hello and enjoys my commentating whatever you want to call it you know um i'm here to to learn more about the teams myself to prepare myself more heavily as a caster for the pmpl eu west and of course to provide a level of entertainment and enjoyment for you guys to watch some fantastic PUBG mobile action so uh let's get the timer ready for the final game of the day before i go to a break do 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 the hell okay i'm an idiot Okay, I'll stay talking for another minute because it's like eight minutes until the next game starts. So, uh, you know, I'll uh, hang around for another minute or so. Good, good games today. Uh, pretty impressed with the consistency from 
Conquer, as I already mentioned, nice to see uh, Nexus continuing to develop as a team and be aggressive while also being clever and safe at the same time. Um, Eastern Star is really not given an opportunity to shine in that game. One shot UDR. There's still uh, that level of, of uncertainty for me in, in how one shot UDR really going to be uh, at the top of standings come PMPL. Whether they, they turn it on at that time and they flick that switch, right? I just don't know if they can. I just don't know. Um, I'm always open to be proven wrong. And I love the players from One Shot UDR, really. Uh, you know, um, it, it, it's, the PMPL is going to be extremely tough. It's going to be extremely tough. Um, what, what do you expect when you're talking about, you know, the journey to be the best in the world, the journey to be the best in your region? If, if everything was easy anybody could do it and only the best of the best in this you know, to be in this situation to uh pull us off so on that note i'm gonna go for a break i will see you guys for game number five the final game of the evening here in the pmpl u west pro screams as in bed
I'm back. EMPL EU West Pro Scrims brought to you by myself, Imperium. Four games down, one more to go. Thank you once again to everybody for tuning in, for sticking with me and enjoying the show along the way. To uh, kind of answer a couple of questions, one that I've already asked, um, the one that I've already answered, should I say. Yeah, for PE, I, uh, I am hoping to do a viewer party. I'm waiting to get some kind of approval for it. I'm hoping that I can get some kind of approval. I don't wish to... Uh, you know, get myself into trouble and to do anything wrong. I know I've, you were part of some of the PEL days and that's kind of, oh, not that it's okay, but it's less significant. And so it's not as massive, right? Well, okay, it's still massive, but it, you know, I was, I was, I should, I didn't get approval for that and I should have tried to. Um, whereas I, again, I just don't want to get myself into trouble, especially as caster. You know, um, as far as, you know, to answer your question, Shrek, um, you know, uh, <laughs> your casting looks like it should be among some top casters. I like, I don't know. I, I just do my best with casting and I work my ass off to try and improve and get better and to provide the right level of entertainment, emotion, feeding, information um, to represent the teams and the players in the best way to put a smile on people's faces to hopefully just do anything to take five minutes of of someone's personal crap away from their mind right you know that kind of thing if i can do that for one person i'm happy my casting you know and i'll never stop trying to be better that's so you know w whether or not you know you know be among some of the best casters that's up for other people to decide right i'm very confident in my ability to be a caster but i'll never you know think i'm the best or i'll never be truly happy with my casting because the second i'm truly happy with my casting i i, I probably should stop because i'm you know um, i might be happy with very happy with some games that i cast in those moments but those are just moments and then I can't always rely on it, right? I have to constantly look at how I can be better the next game, how I can be better the next broadcast. Anyway, that's uh that's me just talking a little bit too much, probably. Um and going on. So sorry for boring you guys. Um, <laughs> um Ah, no, definitely not being too... Like, you have to stay humble, I think. You know, I think it's important to... Hey, Peppy, how are you getting on? How was your sushi? By the way, how was your sushi? Um, I think it, you have to stay humble. It's, it's, I think it's really important to stay humble, in, in, you know, in, in, in your own world, right? You can be confident. You can be, you know... You can feel good about what you're doing, but I think it's quite important to stay humble. And I'm always humbled by the amount of support I get and the messages I get. That genuinely, you know, the support keeps me humble. It keeps me grounded, right? Um, that will never... Uh... Yes, casting is my primary job. I cast full time. That's, that's it. It's what I do. I get paid to talk. What the hell is going... Okay. So, there was obviously, uh, not a delay, but a mistake, but we're into the, into the next game. So, uh, let's switch. Okay, we didn't see the plane path, because, uh, something happened, but, uh, we're into the game. Uh, let's make sure the volume is up. Okay, I'm gonna turn up just a little bit there. You go. Cool. It's 2 a.m. in Nepal. Jeez, sushi, what the hell? Um, it's not boring. It's relaxing to hear. It's not going to hurt your ears. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, he cast me. Uh, who's you, G PUBG Mobile? Wait, who who are you? My friend ate it because he ordered what I don't like. Oh, my God. Wait, what sushi don't you like? And what sushi do you like? Anyway, the fight 
is going on between Res Q and Destiny. Yeah, Des both of these teams have not had a good day, to be fair. And it's about to go uh, from bad to worse for one of these teams in Camp Alpha. Fight breaking out right off the bat in this final game of the evening. Cody's knocked down, crawling to cover. Well, no, she tries to heal up, but Tick finds him. That's a good start. Why? Observers, are you sweet? Thank you very much. Mishi at least does take down Hyper. Confirms that kill to even things out. It is, for the most part, 3v2. Because even though Rescue technically has a third up, it's actually 3v1. Mishi is going to get knocked down. No, 3v2. His blood is going to get taken down. Tick from the high ground up above. Can only do so much with that M4. No one is indeed in the Southeastern Island. The teams that are out of this game is Conquer Optimus Esports for Romania Men and Lack of Nostra MVP. See, because we didn't see the plane path, that plane path could have been like massively, massively up north. Ah, oh, Sneak. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Sneak. How you getting on, man? How come you just have your name is G PUBG Mobile? What the hell? I go play some lobbies. I will tell you later. See you later. See you, Peppy. Look forward to some games. Have fun. You're amazing, Peppy. Woo woo! -woo. Okay. One shot U D R. GML moving out. There's, a, there's some voices in the, in the background um, outside of my room, so yeah, it's kind of curious, but uh, either way. 12 teams left, 42 players alive. Unfortunately, not all teams are actually playing in this game as well. Uh, so that's also part of maybe why nobody's in the Southeastern Island. Didn't see where the phase one went because they're terrible at showing the map. Sorry. Uh, Sir Imperium, and what time is it now on your place here in the Philippines? It's already 4 a.m. For me, it's 9 p.m., Cass. For me, it's 9 p.m. So I'm about... Gee, God, I'm like... 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. I'm like 7 hours behind you, my friend. 7 hours, I think. I just felt like a name change. Fair enough, fair enough, Sneak. Confusing, but fair enough. Your mongoose. Rice gang. Moving into... They, they, I think they, they, no, no, no. I think they dropped, they dropped, I think rice gang dropped on the southwestern, so, southwestern island. Yeah, they did. They did drop on the southwestern island. They did. Now they're coming in via Pine Ann. Because there's no lack of Nostra MVP, they know that area is free. It's very quiet in the early game. Still have yet to see what the map is. Yeah, 9.05 p.m. in, I guess, in Ireland. You are dead, right? Uh, Shashwa. Well, 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 uh, well guessed. Of course, guys, you're suffering. Gonna have to be careful of not only Black Sparks, but possibly Unicorns of Love and Eastern Stars coming from the Eastern Hills. Overlooking Quarry region. Unicorns of Love and Game Lord rotating in a similar path line. I mentioned uh, previously about Game Lord's uh, lack of synergy when it comes to engagements. It's going to be a tough test. They have a 2 2 split as of right now, and I think Monsos is, in my opinion, going to. A little bit too aggressive. He sees Ked. He's going to get shot at by Phoenix. Phoenix knocks him down. Like I said, I thought he was going a bit too deep. There's no real support from the new, right? Like, 
Why go in so blind on your own? If you're pretty sure there's a team there, wait. Make sure you're in a position, if you're on a 2-2 split, where your back two players can support you. Whereas it's quite obvious that Lanou, no way to help. And Victor stopped at the right position. So it wasn't that that was a lack of synergy, although I think... When it comes to IGLing and decision making, if you're going to commit, commit as a full squad. But I also understand why Victor stayed behind that rock. It was the best uh, decision for them to make. Guys, you're serving under a lot of pressure. The help of uh, Eastern Stars. Black Sparks. Getting a knockdown. But it's not going to stop Bujo taking shots towards ammo. The comfort of the building. Mishi's knocked down, but nobody's confirmed up yet. I wish PUBG will fix the hacker problem. There's so much hackers in Asia server. Yeah, guys, look, you know, unfortunately, you'll never stop hackers, but I'm sure they can do more to, uh, s you know, stop them or make they, they can do more to, to make, not make it so easy for them to hack. But uh, that's a different story as we come into phase two. Thank you very much, Abdul. Much love to you and all of Pakistan has shifted quite nicely on the northeast, where it is majority of the mainland in play. However, Quarry is in the center of this phase two, and we know Ricky Quarry can be the play around. You don't want to be in the center either side. This is really the only viable areas. The south side, I think, is also pretty manageable. Nobody's there for now. Black Sparks on the west, UDR, um, Eastern Stars. And uh, Gaijin Seraphon on the east. Like I said, there was a chance that there was going to be a little bit of a fight between, uh, you know, Eastern Stars and... Uh, actually, not Scrim... Actually, Scrim Farm are joining on, in on this. So it's Scrim Farm, Eastern Stars, and One Shot UDR. The east of this map. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Eastern stars are more in the comfort of a of a compound, and they're more on the low ground, so I don't think they can really third party. So this kind of fight is a little bit more isolated. If it does kind of, if it is manipulated in a different direction or more towards the downhill area, yeah, of course Eastern stars could get involved. But I don't think any of these teams want to go more towards quarry, right? They want to try and push each other back. That's why this fight, I think, is going to end up brewing up sooner rather than later. Coming into phase two. 30 seconds until the blue zone starts closing in. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, Shrag. With Quarry, you are very, very heavily dictated on how you can rotate through that land, right? You can go through the middle, but it's not recommended. And it's rarely done. Only at the end game, if it's on the very edge of the circle, or you kind of have to, you'll use the underpass. You, you'll you use the actual inside of the quarry to rotate in. Yes. I, I, I'm I not a fan of it in competitive. I wouldn't much prefer to see Vikendi instead of Sanhok. But I also understood, I understand why they took away Sanok. You can see in the minimap, one shot UDR, Scrim Farm, Eastern Stars, and Gaijin Star from four teams on the eastern side of the map between Quarry and Kampong. Two players of Scrim Farm and not. And that's going to be a third. Scrim Farm down to one. They are using Reach of Douse Legion, but he's not spotted. And Z Zayrox. Least going to return fire in a 1v1. Ulysses is left on his own. Try and take this fight. Xerox. He's not going to go for the revive. I like that. He's going to look for the confirmation, but he doesn't have any idea where Ulysses is. He does now. However, Ulysses is going to cook up a grenade and from behind. Eastern Stars move on up. Hear the noise. And they're going to third party that one. Down goes Scrim Farm. And now they're going to look to get the better of one shot UDR. Perfectly timed by Eastern Stars. Perfectly timed. Tracking the knocks. Tracking the shots. 
I really think that was a massive part of why Eastern Stars then made the decision to go for that fight. Because up until that point, nobody had really been confirmed by either side. Those So those knocks wouldn't have been 100% to do with that fight, right? But now as they are a little bit unaware of exactly where One Shot UDR are... One shot UDR crew have been able to get themselves back up as a three man squad, so only suffering one casualty in that fight that was third partied by Eastern Stars. The next circle does shift away from Quarry, but the black hole of the abyss outside so boot camp is in play. Game Lord on the upper hills in the middle of the circle looking good. Unicorn's a bit down south. Having sight lines on towards Black Sparks and the other teams around the quarry area. Fantastic spot for Unicorns of Love to be in, but can they control it? Athos behind a rock, Pocus on the other side, Hocus Pocus, Alakazam. I've got this kill in the palm of my hands. He is aware. He spots up. Athos picks on up while Pocus is looting and takes him down. Great play by Athos. Great awareness. The audio cues were phenomenal in that moment. In that moment, it was phenomenal audio tracking by Athos. Puts one shot UDR down to two players. They do still have four kills. Sandro and Ulysses, the last two players up. They can still win this fight. Can still win this fight. Unicorns of Love do have a bit of a... Eh. It's not quite a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one split, but it's definitely not like a 3-1 split, right? It's definitely not a 2-2 two, two split. They can support each other. <sighs> Don't know how I feel about it. I think for the position that they're in, it makes sense because nearly all of them are behind rocks. Ked is definitely the one I worry about the most as kind of the scouter, as that flank player. He does tend at times to get caught out a bit more often. I'm not exactly sure why. Part of it could be the risk of being the scout. The other part could be the risk of kind of maybe being a bit tunnel visioned at times. I don't know. Oh, uh, is bot. He shut down the love. Really big bot LMAO, but we still love him. Indeed, Can Canapella. Canapella Binny buying his way through this Sandhawk map. Phoenix gets knocked down. So it's a bit of an opening for a team to breach on to Unicorns of Love's hill in space. In the Team 5 are Unicorns of Love, by the way. Team 5 are Unicorns of Love in this game. Phoenix did get revived up, and that's what I said about Unicorns of Love's position, right? That it's split, but they are still able to get the revives. So that's why I'm kind of okay with it. And... Because guys, you're not far away. They're not able to really capitalize on it. Yeah, okay, Game Lord is kind of behind them and game Lanou is doing a bit of tracking herself that information gathering is massive but she does take a bit of damage be aware of that one coming into the next phase you can see in the minimap gsg rice gang further away and oh my god that shift to the west i was not expecting that but we'll all be a a, a son of a whistle like, that, like, damn. Well, you know. Give me a guitar and call me Jimi Hendrix because that shift was monstrous. Put so much pressure on the teams that are on the western side of this map. Very interesting to see who deals with this. The best boot camp is in play and GSG Orb are close by, but GSG Orb most likely are going to opt for the compound that's outside boot camp. It makes sense. Destiny have sent 
their players in the boot camp because they were on the eastern side, of, the western side of the map. So Imperium is like an Australian MVP qualifying for PMPL in May or is it not? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they qualify for PMPL in May. They're playing the PMPL. That's why they're in these scrims, my friend. Taz. These zone shifts are so similar like PL. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Victor choking up a grenade. Battle is on between Game Lord and Umbra. Nicely played by Victor. Sends Piercy back behind. Lenu is going to get confirmed up. Victor is left in his own. I think Umbra ended up getting ahead of Game Lord in that situation and then, you know, suppress him down from the back line. So Victor is going to have to backtrack around. Just have a lower part of the hill in which you can kind of maybe play on the more coastal line of this, of this map. Uh, either way. I'm looking the best. Eastern Stars do finally find one shot UDR and I believe get the better of them. GSU are up still for another knockdown. I think at the hands of Unicorns of Love this time. Still on the hills, Unicorns of Love are going to look to gatekeep a number of these teams. But I think now they need to think about being a bit more together in a 2 2 split or a 3 1 split. I don't know if Ked is going to join up with the rest of his team. I understand why Ked is there on his own. And if that's the case, the rest of Unicorns of Love should be together to have the magnitude of support gaijin are moving up to the hill behind them fresh and savage x proned down aka pelka is knocked down in the feed now you being choked up gaijin seraphim are pretty sure that they're there because they got a knockdown previously on the phoenix a blind nade followed by a blind molotov i think that's a really silly move for bujo to pull off because He's giving information over to Unicorn's Love. It may not be perfectly core information, but it's still information to prepare. Swave gets knocked down on the sidelines at the hands of Ked, if I'm not mistaken. Kamaro takes that kill away. The next circle shifts away from boot camp in to the compound that Levy of GSG Orb holds on to. So GSG are in the center of this phase five. Black Sparks going up against Rice Gang. Rice Gang still find themselves up as a full squad. One's inside the circle. I think a tiny little shack that's on the edge could catch out one of the Black Sparks players. Indeed, it's Carno going up against Banger, and that's where the rest of where like where is the rest of Rice Gang? Why was that allowed to happen? That focus needs to be a lot better, guys. Rice Gang, you need to have that. If you're going to have that player, you know, inside the circle like that, as, I wouldn't say as a bit of a bait, but as an anchor point, you better be sure that you have that backup support. That was a free easy kill for Banger. Really well played, but Banger, no doubt, no less. However, Rice Gang will still be able to play on the southwestern edge of the circle. Neymar and Destiny helping to shut down Umbra. I believe that's Umbra taken out. Wiped off the board. Eight teams left. 19 players alive. As uh, Blend goes down to the play zone, Hamo to Nightmare as well. That's a little bit of a mistake as Andino gets knocked down, turning around. Kamara trying to deal with it, but yet to find Phoenix. Yet to find Phoenix at the wings of the Phoenix. They're going to rise again in the fight against GSC Europe. Breaching onto the southeastern edge of this phase five circle. A grenade gets taken out. Gets thrown out, should I say, and Phoenix eventually gets knocked down by Adobo. The guy just there from the third party, and Lau knocks down Ked. It's all falling apart for Unicorns of Love as the third knock comes on through. Lau is going to be coming in on a 1v1. Fresh, fresh prones down. He has the bottom of the hill. He has a low ground at the edge of the circle, or should I say. The edge of the blue zone is now in play as the next circle does shift away. GSG do still have two players in the anchor point inside the circle. He does move on to the elevated position of the rock. That's where Fresh realizes he had to move up. He had to make a move. He's going to get taken out from behind. Fresh has no doubt the drive, the force, the fight to take down Lau and to keep his team alive. Very well played by Unicorns. A lot with the blue zone closing in, I don't think Fresh should go for the revive on the Savage X. Just get as many heals as you can and move in. Don't go for the revive. Indeed, he's not. Of course, GSG Orp will be aware that Fresh is going to be coming down the hill and that's why Fresh is trying to play by the side of the rocks. 
Looking in towards the window of the building, which Levi is holding down. Fresh gets taken out. PRZ with the third party. I thought PRZ and Lumber side were down, but they were holding into the uh, black hole of the abyss that is outside boot camp. And PRZ knocks on up and takes down Unicorns. A lot of four teams left up. Destiny, GSD, York, Black Sparks, and Team Umbra. 3v2, v1, v1, if I'm not mistaken. Banger goes down. Three teams are now left. 3v2, v1 as Destiny hold on to the corner of boot camp. I think it's still inside the circle as PRZ heals up in the blue. Levy knows. Levy's aware. He heard the shots when PRZ took down Fresh just 30 seconds ago and knows that with the edge of the blue zone, chunking him down it's a matter of time but the circle has gone away from gsgr they have to move across the road and this is essentially a free win for destiny because not only do they have the body advantage they have the circle advantage they have the positional advantage they have the controlling advantage but i want to know i need to know how much utility gsg europe have how many smokes However many they have, they're going to have to start throwing them out now because the blue zone is starting to chunk its way in. And Destiny know that they're coming in from the compounds. Don't take the damage, Kamara. It's not worth it, GSG. Taking their time, being aware not to be overly confident with those smokes. Drops the backpack. Staying on the edge of the smokes, knowing that there's going to be a barrage of grenades coming in around where these smokes are. One was thrown up, but no more since then. Beast on the flank angle, Mishi and Neymad around on towards the grass. He pastures outside boot camp. Levy gets knocked out. Kamara's left on his own. 1v3. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's going to try and heal up. No, he's, no, he's going to stop healing up. I don't think he knows where Kamara is, but indeed, with the 1v3 fired on 3, he might get one knock, but I can't see him getting any more. He switches over, looks for a beast, but it's going to be the last player of G of, of Destiny that's going to come out and take down GSG Europe. Fantastic. Fantastic performance from GSG Orb. They nearly got the back to back. But in the end, Destiny finally, after three bad games, they come in on the final game and get the chicken in her. So we've had five games, five different winners. I do love to see that. I don't think they had the smokes track, though. That's the thing. I don't think they had the smokes because they had... That two to split, maybe Lau had an extra couple of smokes, right? And that's where, even though it's in the heat of the moment, and you are presuming and hoping to win that, sometimes when you go for that split, try and give your resources to the players that are more likely going to be in the next circle, right? Try and give all your meds or all of your utility to the player that's players that are more likely going to be inside the next circle. Saw GSG, they did use those smokes really well, and also credit to Destiny because they didn't presume they were going to win that game, right? They did spread out, they did make sure that they had the angles covered. That was really well played by uh, by Destiny in the end. Really great gameplay by both these teams. Looking at the highlights, let's uh, switch it through. Indeed, like I said, five games, five different winners. Game one. In our angle was won by Scrimfire. And game two in our angle was won by Clash. Game three in Miramar was taken over by Nexus. Game four won by GS Europe. And game five was won by Destiny. The fight between Scrimfire and One Shot UDR was third partied in the end by Eastern Stars. Yes, One Shot did. Overall, kind of survive as a duo slash trio. But, uh, as the circle shifted away from both of these teams on the eastern side of the mainland, it became harder for them to deal with. Unicorns Love did have a good game, and I really like how they did play 
those splits confidently on the hillside if it was other heels i would have probably have preferred them to hold on to 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 split but i'd like to think that they probably would have fresh with that ump in his hands proves that doesn't matter what gun you have it's what you use what you do with that gun I'm a little bit surprised that Kamara didn't look to try and confirm that kill on Tanae but I also do respect the fact that he did try to go for the actual 1v3. Match leaderboard, second Sandhawk game today. Again, very similar in terms of the kill spread. Nine for the winner, 24 points in total for Destiny. GSG Orb, get 18 points. They're going to... Uh, find themselves moving higher up in the standings because of that team umbra good game for them to end the day 13 points in total 10 moving on for fifth at the match stats mishi of destiny with five kills noro it may not be 10 but still three to find themselves in second place joint with lao and kamara of gsg or phoenix with two kills b sandro and poke is also there on the kill leaderboard See you, George. Take it easy, man. Much love to you, to, to you and all over Romania. Binny Bar, my friend. Binny Bar. Match stats. Mishi topping the damage leaderboard as well. 677. Good stuff indeed. And the standings in the overall destiny on top with 154 points. Nexus got close. Oh, it was no cigar. Conqueror holding on to third. It was a very successful game from the Conqueror boys, despite not getting a chicken dinner, in my opinion. A uh, good, consistent amount of points. Scrim Farm in fourth. Team Umber in fifth. Black Sparks in sixth. Unicorns in love in seventh. And Rice Gang in eighth. Those are your top eight in the overall standings after 12 games. It should be. 16 games but it's after 12 games some teams might have played less there's trust me the 13 games from black sparks and rice gang that is wrong that is wrong anyway look on that note i'm not gonna waste any more of your time guys i'm not gonna waste any more of your time thank you so much to everybody for tuning into the games and for sticking with me throughout the whole stream uh for chatting for having a laugh or just being here means a lot feel free to like the stream subscribe to the channel if you also like it and you haven't already you can follow me on both twitter and instagram at evt underscore imperium and on that note look after yourselves guys stay safe stay awesome pretty um share love Spread positivity. Do what you can. Smile and enjoy life. Have a good evening. See you guys soon.